Hello, welcome everyone to the 411 Mania podcast. I am Jeremy Lambert, joined today by a lot of people, but for right now, Steve Cook. Steve, we are here to uh, reflect, celebrate the life of uh, our good friend Larry Zonka, who sadly passed away this past Monday. Um, I appreciate you, you joining me, buddy. I know it's tough times for... A lot of people, um, and but yeah, I'm, I'm appreciative that you're here to uh, talk about our good friend Larry. Yeah, thank you for having me, Jeremy. And it is, uh, you know, it's a it's a tough time we're all going through right now. And before we get too deep into it, I just want to thank everybody that's, uh, you know, certainly everybody that's contributed to uh, Larry's fundraiser, uh, all the people have commented online, and and pers- personally for for me, a lot of people have come out and contacted me as well during this time and i i appreciate it appreciate that immensely and can't thank you all enough for that yes uh 100 it's been heartwarming to to see the community come together it the circumstances suck like there's no other way around it this sucks larry was he was awesome he he was a, a good friend for for both of us his work ethic everyone will say it second to none uh but to see the wrestlers who have come out uh, the various websites, the various people who have donated to the GoFundMe. We'll include the link to the, the GoFundMe in the description. Uh, but to see everybody who has, you know, reached out uh, to friends, family, people, just people like me and uh, Steve Cook, it's been it's been great to see. We appreciate all the, the support and the love. Um, but again, it's unfortunate that th- this is the reason we're all coming together because we don't want to lose someone like Larry Zonka. We don't want to lose anybody, but someone like Larry Zonka, uh, it was, it was tough. It was tough on Monday, dude. And it's only been a couple of days, but fuck Monday was Monday was rough. Yes. Yes, it was. Um, I was, I was at work. Uh, well, I was about to go into work actually, when I got the news from Ashish and, uh, you know, imagine hearing something like that or, you know, reading or whatever. You know, just minutes before you're about to clock into your job. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was that was not great. And but I, I think working actually helped me through it for that period of time because it gave me something else to concentrate on, and I was able to get through all that. And and so happened that my dad's birthday it was also on May 18th. So oh, wow. yeah, talk about the up and downs and emotions. So I saw you know dad and mom and my sister that night. And then after that, I went and wrote about it for well, I did contribute 411 I also did a column for the chair shot that'll be up by the time this all gets posted and uh, that that was tough that was tough to do yeah I saw it I was working I think I was working on the the Ricky Stark story that he left and 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 Monday was terrible because the Shad Gaspard stuff came out on Monday and yeah. that that he was missing and so I had to write about that and then I saw the 411 tweet and like, I didn't think it was true at first. I like, I didn't want to believe that it was true. And I was getting ready to email Ashish, like, is this true? And I, I saw in my email that he had emailed me and mentioned, I was like, I was just torn up. Like, I, I completely understand what you mean. Like work was a nice distraction. I, I attempted to work for like five minutes after that. And I was like, nope, like, I'm checking out for the day. Like, I'm just, I'm done. Uh, I'll catch y'all tomorrow. And, and that's pretty much what I did. And I, um, you know, it just, I was just gone on Monday. It was, it was heartbreaking. It was really tough. Um, I, I, I talked to my wife cause my wife knew him. I talked to my mom cause, cause my mom knew him and like, yeah, we put we put the tribute together on four one one, and it was a great tribute with a lot of people, uh, giving their thoughts and remembrances of, of Larry. And you know, if you haven't checked that out, please please check that out because you just see how many people that that Larry helped out in some way. I mean, whether I mean, I know for me personally, like I I wouldn't be where I'm at without him because. I emailed like on a whim. I think they were looking for uh, an ultimate fighter 
recapper and i was like oh yeah like i was still in college i was like yeah sure like i watched the show i'll do the recaps and so i just started recapping ultimate fighter and then that turned into doing an mma news column which turned into doing like coverage which turned into podcast and all kind of articles and weekly articles and then to to where to everything that i'm doing today and like larry was always with me through that and we'd always do podcasts together um you know us three we, we did multiple podcasts together just on various wrestling things and like it's just it's so weird that that he's not here yeah it is and of course um and i i've talked about 411 and, and whatnot but me and larry go way back to uh, before the 411 days we both kind of started wrestling about writing about pro wrestling together on the smaller sites and Larry kind of got the move up first and a bunch of stuff happened and he brought me along and I've been able, I've been lucky enough to ride the guy's coattails for, uh, gosh, 16 years or so. It's, pretty, it's been a pretty amazing ride and he's be, and he became one of the most uh, respected voices in what we do. He, he wrote more about more shows than anybody else did by a wide margin. And you could always trust the guy's opinions. He's always, you know, shooting from the hip. He was always, you know, he was always being legit with you. He wasn't trying to, not trying to BS you like some of us like to do here. But, uh, and, you know, we'd started doing the podcast again over the past year, and we were doing the AEW NXT thing. And uh, I remember on Saturday night, we were going to do something about Clash of the Champions 7 and 8. I was excited because uh, Clash 7 featured one of my favorite tag teams of all time, the, the Ding Dongs. Uh, <laughs> ding, ding and Dong. Ding and Dong were on this show facing the legendary George South and uh, Cougar J. I don't know what happened to Cougar J, but uh, I think he he went far, far away. But I was so looking forward to the talk with Larry about how the greatness of the Ding Dongs. They come out with their bell and ring it, and the ring bell it fell over and people cheered. And Jim Ross just kind of buried the whole thing on commentary. Is is in that case, I guess not much has changed from here to there now. But uh, yeah, just. And then Larry had something else come up, and we weren't able to do it that night. And I just kind of thought, well, yeah, we, we can do it another time. Because, unfortunately, you always think there's going to be another time. And most of the time there is, and sometimes there's not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it is true, like, when people say, you know, reach out to loved ones. You don't know, like, tomorrow isn't promised, like it's very easy to just dismiss that and be like, yeah, sure. I'll see you tomorrow. But like moments like this remind you that that's not the case. Like people, people are like, they might not be here tomorrow. And it's, if you do have a loved one, you know, reach out, because you, you never know what's going to happen. Like I, I wish I had reached out more to him, even though we we did talk all the time. Like it, it didn't feel like it was enough now. Because now, like it, it's not there anymore. And you, you're right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be a little bit more more positive and whatnot. Um, you're you're right. And like that's right. Larry Larry's work was. For my money, it was the absolute best when it came to reviewing matches because he did watch everything. Like he didn't, he didn't skip shows. He he wasn't, you know, he wasn't be like, okay, well, it's these are the circumstances, so I'm not gonna do this. Like no, like he was going to watch everything. And and people get the, you know, he he said this a lot of times on, on the podcast, um, but like people people think that because Larry gives something like two stars and they may give it like three stars it's like oh larry like hates this like oh why do you watch these shows if you hate these shows and stuff and it's like larry just loved wrestling that's why he watched these shows like no one no one wants to watch main event you know like who or barely anybody can watch main event <laughs> <laughs> like we're i we're pretty big wrestling fans, Cook, and like we're not yeah. watching main event because most of the time it's like, all right, it's four minute matches, like mediocre matches at best. Like it's just it's it's nothing matches. And Larry's like, you know what though? It's wrestling, 
and I'm going to watch it. And, like, that's just what he did. Like, he absolutely just loved watching professional wrestling. And that's why he reviewed all those shows. And, and that's why, like, that's why I think he, like, he is the absolute best when it comes to reviewing shows. Because he was watching the stuff that nobody else was. Like, his... He knew everything. He was very diverse in everything he covered. He, he would cover all the, the various independent promotions and, and Japan promotions and stuff. Like, he'd seen everything. So he knew, you know, he was like a measuring stick. Um, well, I'm sure we'll bring people on and we'll just be like, you know, if we didn't know a match was good, if we missed the match, we'd be like, okay, would Larry give it? And then we check his rating. If it, like, he was a measuring stick when it came to a, a good match or bad match or a match worth seeking out and stuff. And like, it's, it's gone now. <laughs> like that and so much more. Like, it's just, it's just, I, I still have a tough time coming to grips that like none of this is, is here anymore. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it's going to take four on one, multiple people to even try to replace Larry because yeah. uh, we've tried replacing Larry before at various times and well people were happy when Larry came back let's be honest <laughs> because <laughs> we, we weren't as good I'll be honest I was one of those people who tried to help out and uh, when he came back as a sigh of relief because number one my buddy was back and number two the fans will be happy to read from somebody that made a little bit of sense but uh, you know and you guys mentioned Larry watched so much wrestling so let's be honest uh, your three star match might be his two star match because he watched a lot and lots and lots and lots of stuff. There's stuff he saw that I'd never, you know, even heard of. He had reviews up for shows like freaking Ring Warriors on WGN with like Austin Aries and completely random ass people. Just uh, any wrestling startup you can think of uh, since 2004 or whatever. Larry reviewed it. I don't think there was a promotion out there that he hasn't reviewed, even. You know, even maybe the Fed down the street for me, he's probably seen a show from that too. <laughs> I remember being yeah, over. I watched everything. I remember being over at his house and he was watching like this Hulu pilot. It was like Dojo Wrestling or something. I have no idea what this was, and I'm just like, "Are what are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm watching this. You know, this Hulu Dojo Wrestling." show and like it was clearly a show that was gonna last for like eight episodes and it may have been from like three years ago that just has no bearing on the actual like wrestling landscape today and larry's just like yeah dude like it's technically new wrestling it's new content like so i'm gonna watch it and i'm gonna review it i'm like you're a madman but i love you but i just like no one was watching this stuff and he was like he really did more to just like boost promotions and profiles than than so many so many people did like wrestling always looked for coverage and stuff and like if you wanted coverage just ask larry to review your show because he would do it and you know you might not like what he had to say about some of your matches but you know if if you want to be respected you would respect his opinion on on what he had to say and he'd always find something positive to say, it too, let's be honest. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember, remember just going out and just completely burying a show and just, you know, just saying, like, oh, all the workers in the show were shit. They suck and they're terrible. He always found something good on a show to talk about. He'd, he'd always find that one wrestler that, okay, well, maybe this guy's all right, or maybe this angle's pretty good. He always, I, I thought he always found something good to like about any show, which, I mean, I have, I, I admit I have a hard time doing that, and a lot of us do as well, but Larry never had a problem with that. I was wondering what that background noise was, and I see that uh, Sam or Katie has jumped on the call here. Um... Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I wasn't even aware <laughs> that uh, my mic was was hot. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. So the way this show is going to, to work is we're going to have various people on through the 411 days, through the wrestling community. Who knows who is going to pop on. Uh, who knows how long this show is going to last. We we appreciate everyone uh, uh, listening and, and checking out the show. Again, you can donate to uh, Larry's GoFundMe. He he had two lovely daughters, Hannah and Alex, and a wife, Christy. Um, so so donate to the GoFundMe to to help them out through their uh, lives. And But we're going to have various people pop on. And I was doing testing earlier. And Samer was one of the people I was testing with. So he had the early link. So Samer Katie, 
uh, wrote for 411. I don't remember the years because my memory is terrible. But mainly the the MMA section. We used to do a, a podcast together on the 411 website uh reviewing mma before mma started to suck uh sammer memories thoughts anything about larry well i mean there's honestly a lot to cover that i wrote for the website between 2009 and 2011 and then again from 2012 to 2014 um there's a stint in between that we'll cover later. Uh, but my first exposure to Larry, I guess, was simply as a reader. Um, I've always been on and off with pro wrestling since post the Attitude Era and the death of WCW. And, and really, when I, when I began my interest in pro wrestling at around 2006, I think... Uh, Larry, 411 Mania was the website I stumbled upon, and of course Larry's name was more or less everywhere. Um, he was, I think at the time he was doing the three R's or the four R's, and he had that Russorific section, which was always hilarious, and I thought the name was really funny and smart. And that's how I was first introduced to Larry, and the format, and the format of that column was interesting in that it allowed for fair criticism, but also some humor. And Larry really wrote it in always in such a relatable way. I never, I never felt that I was reading some know-it-all who was sort of condescending in his tone. The thing about pro wrestling is that it is so subjective that it's very easy to dislike someone's writing if you happen to disagree with them. I mean, you guys have been here long enough, so you know how the debates were regarding star ratings and matches and whatever. And really, ever since I first started reading Larry's work, he was probably the most reliable guy for me in terms of just assessing the quality of a show, of an event. Like, if Larry said that show was good, it was good for me. That's how it worked. I'm not saying it's necessarily a smart approach, but if I liked the match a lot, and I, I would still sort of need his validation if he liked it as well i was like okay oof, then then i know what i'm talking about he became the reference for me and for better or for worse and i always liked something about his recap style where he would write these show reviews seconds after the show's over and they're really elaborate they cover just about everything and you can tell that he writes them from the perspective of someone who wants to enjoy the show i feel like to where even when he doesn't, he's infuriated because he's not enjoying it, rather than he just wants to shit on the product. Um, I remember reading his... I never actually watched TNA, but I always read Larry's TNA Impact reviews, uh, mainly to see him rage about the quality <laughs> of the of the show. And you can tell that... You can tell that he had a lot of appreciation for the talent they had. This was, of course, when they had Samoa Joe and AJ Styles and all those guys in their heyday. And whenever there's a great match, he, you can see the excitement in the way he's writing. It was always funny. It was never ham-fisted. Everything seemed seamless. Um, he developed these catchphrases, and they always felt to me like his writing just really flowed. And later on that year, he was also covering MMA for the website. I mean... Uh, I only caught the tail end of what you were saying, but I think you're referring to his work ethic, and I've really never seen anything like it. Uh, the UFC circa 2007, when all these upsets were happening, Larry, I think, was the one ca covering all the pay-per-views. Uh, before you joined, uh, Jeremy, or around the time you joined, but you weren't covering the pay-per-views yet, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So... Seeing Larry being excited for Couture Sylvia and Sarah St. Pierre and all these fights... Also sort of, I was already an MMA fan at the time, but, and I'm, I'm, I'm truly not just saying that, but he had a role in sort of also um, increasing my passion for MMA. A couple of years later, I, I wrote for the site, I applied, and um, I became a writer there. And as a boss, I mean, oof. That guy was really amazing. I tweeted about this after, you know, the news broke, that, that I legitimately never had a bad interaction with him. And Jeremy, as someone who, 
I mean, you've worked with me a lot. You can attest that I'm the biggest procrastinator <laughs> ever. I, I think it's that's fair to say. So, you know, if the deadline was... See, a lot of the time I was... <laughs> I was living in Lebanon on and off at the time, as opposed to on and on now. Uh, and the deadline was always fell on like 5 a.m. my time. So you'd think I would actually submit it a lot earlier. But no, I would submit it 5 a.m. every morning, I guess. And every time I would come up with some excuse as to why I'm late or whatever, he never had a problem with it. He, you know, he, he really was so easy to work with. I remember like... Every year around the year and time where we're supposed to do these uh, review columns and, you know, show of the year, fight of the year, all that stuff. And every year without fail, after we're done posting all that stuff, he would really thank all the staff. And it is little things like that that sort of made you feel appreciated. Um, when I left for five ounces of pain because Jeremy called me from the parking lot uh, begging me to join... Uh, am I lying? Uh, no, that's that's about how it went down. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy called me and he said, "Hey, join me in five ounces of pain. We'll get to do whatever we want." That was his pitch, legitimately. <laughs> and as opposed to four one one, where we got to do whatever we want. I was gonna say exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was that was his pitch. But he, I remember he said like we, we could post podcasts together and whatever. And I, I was already doing the four one radio show podcast. But Jeremy and I were friends, and I thought, all right. But the only thing that didn't get me to accept it in the blink of an eye was that I really didn't know what to tell Larry. And it took me like a week to actually get the courage to write him an email and say that I'd be leaving. And he was so understanding, despite being on bad terms with five ounces of pain at the time, he was very understanding about the whole thing. And after I left, which turned out to be an amazing decision, um, and... <laughs> You know, some falling out happened there, and Jeremy wanted to go back to four and one, and of course he he wanted me to go back with him, and we were both so happy. Larry was more than happy to take us back. In fact, I don't think either one of us suspected for a second that he'd be like, "Ah, oh, no, like you guys left." Like, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't even an option that he wouldn't welcome us back. And of course, once we came back, he let us do whatever we wanted. We were posting podcasts, supposedly about MMA, but really talking about like wrestling action figures and stuff and the he posted them he ne we never got a word about like oh you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't say that or whatever i really have never ever worked with such an understanding easygoing encouraging boss and on a personal level i mean record i think first of all my sort of emotional attachment To Larry grew when he started doing podcasts around 2008, and I think his wife was doing. Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't his wife his co-host at the time? That's correct. Yeah, Christy was on a lot of the early podcasts with Larry, uh, known as the yeah. wife, of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's yeah. It was it was around 2008, and th those podcasts, they were, you could tell that. He didn't take himself seriously. His wife didn't take herself seriously. She always offered sort of the fans' perspective where Larry was, you know, quote-unquote, the expert. I remember his, his daughter was very young at the time, and she would make some cute appearances. Um, and, and that's sort of that, – that, that podcast really was sort of an exposure as to who Larry was. And uh, I was fortunate enough later on to record many podcasts with him. My, my Honestly, probably my fondest memory – Um, aside from the WrestleMania podcast, uh, Jeremy and Larry and I would, would do once a year, even though I wasn't even watching wrestling. But Jer Larry would be on the show explaining what the fuck was going on to me in terms of the product and who's who and whatever. And I didn't know who any of the guys were without him being condescending or anything. It, it really became a tradition I looked forward to. And we would invite him on the MMA podcast a bunch of times. Um, remember Jeremy when we, I think it was, it was, uh, Hunt for the Bigfoot, yeah. the greatest show of all time. <laughs> Larry was actually on that show. So if, if you're unfamiliar with Jeremy and I, we come up with really terrible ideas and decide to go through with them because why not? And one of them was to live commentate a UFC show in which Mark Hunt fought Bigfoot Silva in what is undoubtedly the greatest fight of all time. And I think Jeremy would agree. 
And Jeremy and I's gimmick was to shit on bad heavyweight fights. And we believed that that fight would be terrible. Larry allowed us to record it live. I Don't ask me why. Uh, I'm sure he regretted that later on. And he was on that show. And truly, like, we had the, the time of our lives. I remember we were recording a podcast on my birthday once post a UFC event. And Larry made sure he would come on. And I think that lasted four and a half hours. And I'm not even exaggerating. No, and we were up, yeah, we were up until like 5 a.m. that night just like talking about, I don't even recall what, but literally everything. It was who? Me, you, Larry, and Radulich? Mark, Mark Radulich. Yeah, Mark Radulich. And Jeffrey Harris called in at one point along with his dog, but uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, that's, we, we can leave that aside. But yeah, it was mainly us four, and we legitimately spoke for like four hours 10% of which were about the show. The rest was a bunch of nonsense. And he, he really was funny without trying too hard. He, he was very kind. I think one thing about Larry is that when you read all the tributes, uh, all the comments on 411, you can really tell that as cliche as it is, but he really, his writing did touch a lot of people and it did affect them. I mean, I was honestly overwhelmed reading the comments because it felt like the stuff you see when a famous wrestler dies, how everybody was, was genuinely grieving because this man had been with them for, I mean, almost two decades when you think about it. And he would post like four reviews a day. I, I have no idea. I think, Jeremy, you were talking about this again. I only came into the tail end, but it always baffled me the amount of stuff he wrote. And even as I grew disinterested in pro wrestling, every once in a while, like I made sure Larry's um, reports were something I would read. If Jeremy told me about some pay-per-view that I needed to check out or whatever, uh, Larry's reviews would be the first thing um, I would, I would go to, to, you know, check out his, his, his star ratings, the match quality and whatnot. Anytime Jeremy and I were, would have an argument about a wrestling match or any, clarification larry was our go-to guy he really was like a connoisseur of wrestling history i think one thing i i truly respect about him is that despite wrestling being a business that could very easily take its toll and burn fans out and i think we've all experienced that to varying extents the fact that larry kept doing that for years at the rapid pace in which he did without really skipping a beat and always seemed to genuinely enjoy it. And when he didn't, it also came from a position of, I really wanted to like this. I just didn't. And the fact that he's been accused of being a shill for pretty much every wrestling company, which means he's fairly objective. I think if you're accused of being an AEW, New Japan, and WWE shill, then you're probably none of the above. So... I, I really think Larry's passion for pro wrestling is, is unlike anything I've ever seen. And that is probably what I remember most about him because to me, that's his legacy in terms of writing. Um, I, I will truly, truly miss him. And I mean, when Jeremy broke the news for me a couple of days ago, we were both very overwhelmed with this. It's it's kind of amazing that I could feel that way about someone whom I've never met. But uh, I was honestly very fortunate to work with him, to know him throughout all these years. I was actually going through some of our old emails, and like no matter what I had told him, whether I would be skipping the week because of whatever reason he, he just was always so accommodating so sort of um he just seemed happy even when he wasn't and one last thing i want to say about him is that when he got his leg amputated last year i was going through personal problems in my life that were far less serious yet i was taking it a lot worse and seeing some of his tweets at the time and how high his spirits were I still have no idea how he did it. And he did it while still posting like three or four reviews a week, which is nuts. So rest in peace. I can safely say I'll never forget him. And I will truly, truly miss him. I'm going to bring on uh, Todd Bergman, our buddy T-Berg, who also wrote with us at uh, 411 during the years Samer mentioned. Again, I have CTE. Uh, Larry hit me over the head too many times. 
with a steel chair, um, a lot of concussion issues. Todd, how you doing, buddy? Hey, guys. I uh, wish we were all getting together under different circumstances today. Yeah, uh, 100%. I, I mentioned that at the, the top of the show. Like, It's been great seeing everybody come together. It, it sucks that this is why we're all coming together. Um, but, Todd, memories of uh, Larry. Well, first and foremost, Larry, you know, was was a, a great dad, um, you know, a great husband and a wonderful human being to work with. Um, I always feel bad when I have to follow Samra because it's kind of like the bathroom break match. He did all this great things and I can't come up with words like that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, you know, Larry, I, I came to 411 in uh, 2008 and I was, you know, a snarky kind of know-it-all and uh, submitted to, to write into the, the MMA zone. And, you know, Larry emailed me and told me I had a job. And, you know, I was very, very excited because, you know, for the longest time I read 411. That's where I got all my wrestling news. That's where I got show breakdowns. I was, you know, super excited. And, and Larry Larry was very welcoming to me to, to run ideas past him. And, and, you know, he never made me feel bad. Even if he was like, that idea is crazy, you're not going to do it. He never made me feel bad about that. Um, and, you know, I, I grew up as a person um, through my time at 411. I know that's kind of crazy, but I had a kid. Um, I got married during that time. Um, and, you know, Larry would always, you know, I, I'd shoot him DMs or emails or something like that, and he would respond, you know, with life advice. So that that's the kind of stuff that people probably didn't see with Larry a lot. Um unless they were writing for the site. But a lot of the readers never knew that Larry did that. You know, he was going through stuff, but he would still reach out to you and, and you know, see how you were. Um, I I left for one a couple times due to, you know, the, the stress of having a kid, working multiple jobs and stuff, but Larry always welcomed me back. You know, um, I had a crazy idea to do uh, MMA soup. And, you know, Larry was like, I love it. Do it. You know, yeah, nothing's too crazy. And, um, you know, he was always welcoming to that, always opened the idea of me, me doing the things that would probably get you kicked off of other websites. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm positive that the 20 people that read my article a week were very, very excited um, to, to see that. And Larry was, you know, he's gone, but his legacy for me is is obviously a lot of you guys. You know, we built the, the 411 circle together. And we still stay in touch, and we we still get together when we can, and um, you know that's something that we're going to have for the rest of our lives, and you know a lot of that is because of Larry and his his wonderful heart. Yeah, if not for Larry, I would not know uh, Jeremy Lambert, or I would not know Todd Bergman, I would not know Sam or Katie, I would not know a ton of the people that uh, I interact with on a daily basis. To be honest with you, a lot of the people I talk to on the internet, I know because of Larry Zonka. Yeah, I would yeah. have to second that. I mean, I, I met Jeremy because of four on one, and Jeremy and I talk literally every day no, for hours at a time. You, sometimes. Have not talked to you since our last podcast. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, and and really, I, I in a lot of ways, that's a credit to Larry because he created this environment. You guys remember the behind the scenes writers forums. Mm -hmm. And even when I would be running wild arguing with Wyatt and, and Jeffrey Harris about how much Dana White sucks, uh, Larry would just let me run rapid until there's a deadline. And he'd be like, hey, it'd be cool if you stop fighting with the guys and just submit a column. <laughs> but even that, he he never said it with sort of any malice or anything. It was just like, yeah, submit this, and then you could just go back to yelling at them. But he really created this this atmosphere of sort of welcoming a fraternity thing like we we all sort of go back to the same era in formula one and i think there's a reason why we're still you know friends to varying extents for sure but we always enjoy talking to each other even a decade later absolutely i think it's um you know today's the nine-year anniversary of macho man passing away and i remember that we actually did a it was one of those friday night uh podcasts where things often got in the weeds but you know, we we did one right after Macho Man passed away, and I remember we we started talking about that, and we talked about a million other things. And Larry was very much like, "Hey guys, you know this is great, but let's stay on topic here." But those are, you know, it's just one of my my favorite memories of 
of Larry because we we were kind of crazy and he was kind of like this this um, resident assistant on our level and he, he kept us in line um, even when we were doing crazy stuff. That Macho Man podcast was the uh, very first one I was a co-host on with Larry, with Larry Zonka. So, you know, you're already kind of nervous about doing it anyway because I'd never done any podcasting stuff before. And then it turns out you find out, you know, Larry and David, oh, the main topic's going to be Macho Man passing away. No pressure, right? I think no pressure. I was on there and you guys buried me for being so young. You're like, what are you calling in for? You don't even have Macho Man memories. <laughs> you and Larry did. Probably. I was like, I was at WCW uh, World War ninety World War three ninety five, where you had to observe this, brother. So I got plenty of Macho Man memories. Oh man, good times. He certainly did. Like the, the I mean, if you've listened to to this podcast already, like we can get off of uh, the rails a little bit. And and Larry was always like, bring it back together. Like his hosting ability. I, I mean, we've all done podcasts. I've hosted. I don't know. Cook, you mentioned to me that you've hosted once or twice. And Sam, I don't know if you have. And Bergman, I don't know if you have either. But like host, it's not easy. And Larry made it very easy, especially with, with people like us on the podcast, just going all over the place and he's just like all right let's get you know steer it back on topic get back on course and everything and it like it's not an easy task and that was another thing that he just did exceptionally uh well i did not make it easy for him either i'll tell you that if if you had made if you had me take a breathalyzer during a lot of these podcasts it wouldn't been good (laughs) would not have been good folks including including the last one we did to be honest with you guys so uh he had to deal with that every week, and somehow he managed to do it, so God bless him for it. I have one memory to share that I, I think all of you were a part of. I'm, I don't remember if Todd was, but Jeremy, you're, you'll remember this, even though we haven't spoken about it in forever. Remember when, like, five years ago, or maybe six years ago, you were invited on this terrible sports radio <laughs> show? And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And the host was awful and wished death upon Cam Newton or something. And you were so pissed after you were done. You're like, I need to watch the taste out of this. I'm calling an impromptu podcast. Yes. And you invited me, yeah, Cook, I Larry. I think Todd was actually on. And maybe someone else. And we just rambled for three hours as Tiago Silva pulled a gun on his wife. You remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> I remember this, yes, yes. Dude, midway through the podcast, I hear that this MMA fighter pulled a gun on his wife, and I start making the most inappropriate jokes, and all I hear was Larry saying Jesus in the background. That's all I hear. <laughs> See, that's because I was hosting that one, and I like I didn't care. Right. I was just like, yeah, let it go off the rails. If Larry was hosting, it would have been like, okay, let's let's rein this stuff in. Uh, this is why I'm terrible at this, and Larry was great. <laughs> Was that the night uh, where the chat also went on for like six hours after that podcast? Or was that a different night? Because I remember one night where we were just rambling on for hours on end. And that probably happened more often when I was not involved because I like to have something of a bedtime. I like to go to bed. But uh, on a couple of nights, I get into long conversations with, with these folks. And they could probably hear me drifting off like into my microphone. I'm sure I was probably snoring at some point. But. I do remember we went on forever, but I I don't know if that's it's the same one we're talking about. But there, there seems to be a theme here with people going off the rails and Larry trying to keep everybody in check. He uh, he certainly was a consummate professional um, when it came to everything. You know, I I heard Samer talk about his uh, Larry's work ethic. I I can't imagine having to review that many things and keep the site, you know, running and keeping people making deadlines. And I, I just, uh, I, I cannot imagine the, the amount of work that he put in to, to continue that and make 411, you know, kind of what it is today. And you can definitely see it sometimes taking it still on him through his tweets, through every, every now and again, you know, he would tweet about being tired and burnt out. And I'd be like, well, okay. I mean, I guess he's taking a vacation soon. And then, one day later, he's got like four new articles up and, and, you know, a review and an editorial and I'm like, oh, okay. 
I guess he was just venting. And then he would just keep going and keep going. I have no idea where he found that energy from. That was a slower day for him. Just like two uh, TV reports, May column, and some news stuff. Yeah, that, that was a slower day for Larry. Larry produced a lot, lot, a lot of stuff. And that's one of the things that amazes me about him the most is that I've been producing some more stuff lately. And I, I feel like, can I really write this much? And, and it's like a drift in the bucket compared to what Larry would do. It's probably like equivalent to what Larry would have done in a day. And I can't imagine doing it in a week. So, so one thing I've always admired about him. Somebody has joined, and oh, I've invited people. Okay, sorry. I'm I'm still trying to figure this gimmick out, um, but. Somebody Larry does... gave, never gave me that much time to fill either. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry always had something to say. The, the... I'll be honest. I I would wait a long time for Larry to be quiet during this podcast. But, you know, <laughs> he, he always had a lot to say, and I I certainly appreciate it. But uh, sometimes, and uh, sometimes by the time he finished talking, I would have completely forgotten what I was about to say, or I was going to say whatever Larry said. So I'd just be like, "Oh yeah, duh, it, it is what it is," or "Good times," or. Slap that monkey or whatever the hell. I'm expecting <laughs> y'all to fill time. I'm over here trying to coordinate with people to to get them on the air, and you know I got three three people here. Y'all y'all should be filling plenty of time. Can Todd here. and I talk about the upcoming red season if we're gonna have some baseball or not. Uh, I mean, that's that's fun. Man. Not not gonna happen. So no, let's <laughs> let's stay on topic here, folks. <laughs> I think what just it. happened was pretty good indication as to why Larry was a much better host <laughs> yeah. than Lambert. I mean, there's, there was like a 30 second of awkward silence and Lambert only soups in I, I, 30 seconds later, I guess. I the think I've lost my connection. <laughs> Look, I, that might happen. I have things that I am working on and uh, I cannot... Yes, Again, you guys are supposed to carry. You're supposed to carry me like you have been doing throughout my entire tenure as a wrestling writer. I was carried by Cook all the time on podcasts. I, I was carried by uh, Bergman in articles, and I was carried by Samer in both. So you're supposed to just keep doing that for me. Oh, I have something to share. Oh God, I love Larry to death. I haven't got one single bad thing to say about him, but he should have never, ever. Approved that dumbass name for our call. <laughs> so Lambert, I will never ever forgive you for that. When we came back to four on one after our five ounces thin, we had a fantastic name for the column originally, which was business as usual, which was something Dana White had been screwing forever. And it, it was apropos. It made sense because Lambert and I are back to four on one and it's business as usual. But then Jeremy was so excited the next day. He's like, shit, we're changing the name. It's going to be Occupy the Throne. I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> and it's apparently some rap album that I wasn't even familiar with at the time. And Larry was like, yeah, whatever. Call it whatever you want. And we wrote that shit for two years, and people thought we we're talking about taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's funny because you mentioned the business as usual title. And now I just think I figured out why Larry called the podcast for a very brief period of time I did with him and Tony Sly. He called it business as usual. So I think you guys gave him the idea. Oh, I remember that, actually. I remember that. And it made me more mad at Jeremy. I even texted him about it. <laughs> so, so one of my – sorry, Jeremy. One Not of my uh, favorite memories of Larry was when I did this uh, 411 MMA Factor Fiction Tournament of Great Significance, which was very hotly contested. Uh, Cook won. Kick, Cook, you won the first ass, season. By the way. Kick What's that? Ass. <laughs> yeah, you did. Boy, we're not going to hear about that now. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Cook won, and there was a very controversial decision that uh, Larry actually made the decision for me that uh, most people don't know this, but uh, Cook got the win because Larry was my super secret ruler in that. And oh. so, Cook, you won the first season because because Larry allowed you, after your grand mistake, to uh, <laughs> to advance on. So, I think uh, I only said, like, the wrong guy won a fight in question, right? That's, you you, you did. Like yeah, you know. 
you get confused sometimes watching those UFC shows. What can I say? But, uh, I mean, yeah, I had were, no idea Larry was a yeah, secret benefactor. There. He was, and you, you obviously were the first to uh, to be a journalist and have incorrect information and still run with it as if it was correct. So, so I should uh, still be yeah. in MMA, is what you're saying. I think yeah, you should. Yeah. I didn't watch. Cook, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch the Overing fight there night because I'm at the point where I only watch those shows if I can name somebody that's on them. And I don't know a lot of the newer guys, but hey, Alistair Overing was in Pride back in 2000. So yeah, I know him. Let's watch that. So that's my UFC doing habit. That's my rule as well these days when it comes to MMA, except I don't watch even the shows with guys whose names I'm familiar with. I can't even recall the last MMA show I've watched, honestly. Jeremy, what was the last MMA show I watched? Um, I'll tell you what it wasn't. It Connor, wasn't Velasquez and Connor Ver- and Habib? Yeah, it wasn't Velasquez yeah, think, and uh, Verdum. And Verdum. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't that. Jeremy and I spent one week being hype <laughs> about that fight. Then I forgot it was on and fell asleep. <laughs> That's a true story. But yeah, Habib and Connor was the last fight I watched. So that should tell you everything. I couldn't tell you when that was. No idea. Two years ago that was, this October? That was definitely well over one year ago. Yeah, uh, two, probably two coming, years ago. Yeah. yeah, two years ago this October is when that was. Yeah, and there was a time where I would watch, where I would have watched anything MMA related. I mean, <sighs> Jeremy once had me break down Clay Guida and uh, Gray, <laughs> Gray Maynard twice. <laughs> Uh, look, technical difficulties still okay, so, so, in my... Uh... So another... <laughs> See, this is where Larry would have stepped in and been like, all right, guys, back on topic. What are we <laughs> no, doing? I'm still Does putting Larry him over. Because... Fighters? <laughs> that's, that's why, actually, he's... The... Another reason why he's a much better host than Jeremy is that he remembers <laughs> to push the fucking record button. Because I had been talking for legitimately 39 minutes about Clay Guida and Gray Maynard. The fight lasted just as long, by the way. And at one point, Jeremy was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I think I may have forgotten to press record, so we're going to have to redo this. I I still have technical issues to this day on my podcast. That's why I let Larry host them all when we did them together, because I know he would actually take it, take care of it uh, correctly. You you may or may not have done that with a Jason High interview you and I did on the July fourth one year. Did I? I I thought I hit record on that. I don't. I don't. No, remember. we did the first ten minutes with Jason High, and then you were like, "Oh no!" Oh, that's... he was he was not thrilled to be on the phone with us for another thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds like me. That's probably why he he never talked to me again after that. So that makes sense. <laughs> Well, this is, suddenly this is turning into Jeremy being an incompetent host, which yeah, seems harsh considering he's putting this thing together. Uh, that's a proper yeah, tribute, I, I think, really, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, before before I go, you know, I don't want to outstay my welcome here, but um, before I go, you know, I, I, I absolutely um, admire everything Larry's done. Um, he was he was a, a really good mentor to me. Um, like I put on Facebook, I I had no idea what the hell I was doing when I came to write, and I I still didn't when I left. But he kind of gave me some outlines to follow and some ideas to follow. And you know, whenever someone dies, there's always a struggle of you know why do the good people go and the bad people stay? And um, you know, I'm certainly stuck in that with a lot of other people right now. But um, you know, my heart hurts for Larry's family. Um, obviously, us as friends um, of his hurt as well. So, um, you know, the best we can do is do what we're doing and talking about what he meant to us and what he meant to everyone else. Um, and, you know, the the legacy he leaves behind, like we talked about, is, is wonderful, and we're going to carry that forever. So, um, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, it's an honor to talk about Larry. Um, I hope people keep donating to his GoFundMe and you know, we get to that goal, uh, to help out. I appreciate you, uh, you coming on Todd and, you know, we'll, we'll stay in touch and it does suck that all of this happened this way, but I appreciate you coming on and, uh, sharing your memories, buddy. Yeah. Thanks guys. So uh, much love to y'all and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks man. All right. Bye. All right. Thought. 
All right. Um, Jeremy Thomas is trying to join us, and that might be completely on me. But right now, we actually have uh, from Wrestling Observer site, Brian Rose. Brian, how you doing? I, I, did I am this. doing good. Okay, <laughs> I did. Th- they've been yeah. burying me this whole show, Brian. I was like, I know I did this correctly, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I- I'm happy to be here. I wish under better circumstances, but yes. yeah, it's 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 very nice to see you. It's good to talk to you, man. Um, and we're just sharing memories and thoughts on Larry. So the floor is yours with that. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember the first time I met Larry. It, it was on Twitter. Um, and you know, he just followed me one day and I followed back and he, he's, you know, is it's crazy because we were just joking around Saturday, uh, joking about, I don't even remember what, but, uh, it's, uh, it's all very sudden and all very shocking and I, it still doesn't feel real in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think what I remember most about him is that I, I, for, for the observer site, I would used to, uh, do the reports, the new Japan reports. So I would be up at two thirty, three in the morning for like random Kirk and hall shows. And, you know, I'd be up and I'd check Twitter and Larry was almost always there and he'd have like the same gif of the hand coming out of the ground or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I remember he had, like, such a amazing work ethic. Like, he would review TNA shows that were from, like, the, the pay-per-view agreements that they had to, to adhere to. So they, he would, they would do, like, pay-per-view events that maybe two people watched, and, and Larry was, like, one of them. Uh, I mean, he would review those shows. He would review main events. He would review, you know, just about anything. And... I admired that. I admired the hell out of that for, for being that committed to reviewing all those shows. And um, it's it's a tremendous work ethic that I wish I could emulate. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I mean, it's very shocking. It's it's very sad to, to hear. Really? But I, I mean, he, he he's going to be remembered for a long time because I remember. Uh, after hearing about it, I mean, everybody had something nice to say about Larry. Well, like I didn't see he see or hear one person who didn't have something nice to say. Um, and you know, it really hit home on Monday after Raw, which was like three hours of boring whatever. <laughs> I, I'm sitting around waiting for Larry to to have a review, and then it hit me that you know, there's not going to be a Raw review. There's not going to be anything and that that's when it kind of really hit home and it's like wow i i mean he he had a review for everything and uh just in that sense uh it's it's hard it is it's really shocking larry always posted the uh the like i, I don't know i think it was from terminator maybe the hand like raising out of yeah. the, the the grave uh gif for the new japan reviews and like i remember i would hop on and uh watch the new japan shows as well and like i would just always see that gif i was like yep of course larry's up ready ready to review everything i i stayed with him um for the i guess it was two years ago so the 2018 g1 uh climax the first couple of nights of, of that g1 climax and i'm like I'm sleeping in during these non-tournament matches. Like, just just wake me up when the tournament matches start. And he's like, okay, no problem. And, like, I'd get up, I'd watch the show, and he's like, yeah, I haven't really slept. Like, watch the whole show, did did all the reviews and everything. When I go to Waffle House, like, I don't think that man ever <laughs> slept. No, he, he was always up when I was up. I, I mean, like... <laughs> As far as in the U.S., I mean, I'd always wake up and always see people from the U.K. tweeting and Ireland and all this. But, you know, just for U.S., it would be like me and Larry yeah, doing those New Japan shows. It's, uh, I mean, I he, and I do remember him saying stuff about Waffle House, or at least I've heard the stories. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, once I watch New Japan and I finish, I, I go right to bed. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
The, like, like I would, it would be sloppily edited and be, be like, "Yeah, hey, I'll fix whatever in the morning." <laughs> the the Waffle House stuff is is one hundred percent a shoot because after <laughs> every like New Japan show, even like after any, if Waffle House was open, I remember we were playing beer pong one night and it had to be like one o'clock in the morning or something, and we're all drunk as hell, and we we just go to Waffle House. Like, that was Larry's, like, go-to spot. Like, I'm pretty sure they knew him uh, when he was in there. He would just, he would always sit at, they sit at the, the main table or the, what's it called? The, the bar area, not, like, a booth or anything. We'd always sit there and, like, you know, he, the, the Waffle House stuff, 100% shoot. That was where we went after pretty much every single wrestling show. You know, Waffle House is a tradition in the southeastern United States, yes. uh, not just for wrestling writers, but for pro wrestlers <laughs> as well. Because I have never been to Waffle town, House, believe it or not. Oh, Brian, you, you've you got to go to I Waffle I live on the West Coast. I don't know if there's even one here. There might not be. I, I think it's mostly southeast United States, maybe some other places. But uh, our stuff is like in and out in and out Which isn't yeah, the I, same, but yeah. <laughs> no, they're not. I've heard a lot of good things about in and out though. I've heard great things about their burgers. in and out is good. Yeah, but when you're traveling in Southeast as a wrestler, you know, you're, when you're trying to go from town to town, there's not much open at 3 a.m. other than Waffle House. So that's where you go and get your food. And Larry was like that. Yeah. yeah. He, he was always up at all hours of the day. I'm surprised he, you know, when does he sleep? <laughs> you know, maybe the answer is he didn't. He, he 100% didn't. Like, I, he got like two, three hours of sleep at least anytime i was over there like he just he never he never slept sometimes he would fall asleep on the couch if there was no show to watch and we were just watching something but like as far as just sleeping at night he he did not get much sleep at all and like even if he wasn't reviewing wrestling i remember i would try to sleep and he's over here like listening to podcasts and stuff and just he he never slept. He he was always trying to consume as much wrestling as he could. Yeah. He 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 covered everything. And uh I I mean like I said the TNA shows nobody watched. Uh he even even as very recently he was covering the uh WWE shows that were on F S one that drew like one hundred thousand people, but he, he reviewed them. Even the the greatest matches of Seth Rollins, I think that's one the one I saw. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like well, nobody watches that, yeah. but he did. He he had to review like the the t- WWE 2K20 like dream match that that they did. Like he was reviewing <laughs> video game matches during uh this quarantine and everything. Like he, I, I was telling Cook um previously there was like a show on Hulu like Dojo Wrestling or something, and it was from like two years ago. And he would just, like, watch it. And it has no impact on the current landscape at all. And he's like, it's wrestling. Like, I'm just going to watch it. I'm going to review it. I'm like, all right, dude. More power to you. Yeah. <laughs> he, he would review everything. He was reviewing 205 Live, which, again, nobody's watching. <laughs> and at one point, they were doing, like, best of shows with uh, Oni Lorcan and, and the, these guys who put out, like, one match... Uh, from like their vault, like WrestleMania six or whatever, and another one from like uh, the history of two hundred five live, which nobody remembers. But I, I mean, Larry, Larry reviewed it. I mean, he, I, I don't know why he didn't review. Honestly, I remember his outrage one week when two hundred five live presented the best of Arya Davari. Yeah. <laughs> not one of Larry's favorite workers. There, no. I don't know if. Harry... Larry had like, nice things to say about a lot of people, but I don't think Larry said anything good about Arya Davari ever. So I don't think we're going to have Arya Davari on the show, are we, Jeremy? Uh, no, I, I can't no, imagine Arya not. Davari is going to pop on here on the show. Um, yeah, even like those highlight shows, it's all stuff he had reviewed previously, and he yeah. still just watched it and you know still reviewed it. Like it's it's kind of nuts that that he would actually do that, but. I mean, that's he who would he have was. reviewed it new too, right? He would have done new. He wouldn't just like cut and cut and paste. Right, exactly. Like, no, like, he, he, it would be new. Yeah, he was like, "Well, I'll, I'll watch it with uh, fresh eyes, I guess. You know, see what changed. Maybe, maybe something has changed that I missed the first time three months ago or whenever these matches aired." But like, I, as I said, like 
he genuinely just like loved wrestling and wanted to consume as much wrestling as possible. And he, I, like, he also, I think knew like his reach and stuff. Like he was giving a platform to a lot, especially on the smaller shows. Like you, people sought out Larry's reviews. And if, you know, he said, all right, this person wasn't good, then it, you know, uh, it, it stuck with people, or if this person was good, like it stuck with people. Like, like I think Keith Lee had, had a um quote yeah. of, of saying, like, yeah, I got these top ten matches from Mania Weekend from Larry Zonka, and I was in like three of them, and it's like that that was just something to me. Like, you know, people people really love and respected and admired like the work he did. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw that Keith Lee stuff. I know Kevin Owens said stuff. Yeah, about him. Um. I mean, I didn't realize his reach until these tributes started coming out, and I'm like, wow. I mean, it really does go to show, like, a lot of the wrestlers, especially those on the indie scene, have read Larry's reviews and uh, take a lot of... It means something. It means something to them if he praises their matches or or has criticisms or or stuff like that. And uh, I I didn't realize his reach until he, he passed away, and... That's that's really something that says a lot about his uh, about his ability, his, his reach, his visibility, and not just the circle we have in the wrestling writer slash fan fan base, I, I guess, but over all of wrestling. So that that's that's very nice to know. It is, it's very nice to see that. I'm not gonna name names, but I know people who would like DM him and be like. Okay, what can I improve on? Like, what can I do differently? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Pl- plenty and of wrestlers is... had, had, you know, used Larry as essentially like a measuring stick of okay, like what can I do to to you know make my match better, make my work better. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. it is tough to really even myself. Um, like I didn't know like a lot of this reach until all of this happened mm-hmm. and. It, it's heartwarming to see everyone come together. It, it really sucks that this is the reason we're all coming together. Yeah, I mean, it's all nice. It's very nice to see um, all of this, like, warm sayings and all these, these nice things people are saying about Larry, but I wish, again, I wish it was all under better circumstances. It, it's, it's very depressing. It's, it hasn't been a good week in general. No, no, it hasn't. Um, hearing about Larry is is pretty uh, pretty devastating. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna bring on from Fightful, Sean Ross Sapp. He's here with us. Sean, I appreciate you uh, joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I, I, Jeremy, I've obviously talked to you about Larry, and I didn't have the the type of personal relationship with him that you did, but a lot of times in wrestling media things get weird and catty and stuff and that was never larry zonka in in my experience and i used him as like the benchmark like that's that's the level of work you want to achieve 10 years ago i didn't know what wrestling observer was i had no idea who dave Meltzer was 10 years ago but i knew who larry zonka was because i read his work for years and years and i i looked at the way that he approached things with insight and entertainment and humor while still being fair and i was like that's that's the type of work that i wanted to do that's the type of that's that was the model for me and i thought that larry did that better than anybody i think he's the best wrestling reviewer that there has been period like i i couldn't imagine anyone leaving the type of imprint that he did and i think honestly if any wrestling companies that have been on broadcast TV have produced good content over the last 15 years, they owe Larry Zonka a debt of gratitude for letting people know that it was good, to let it for letting people know that it was worth checking out, that it was even worth seeing, because there have been tons of people that use that and say, oh, okay, this is worth checking out now, because Larry Zonka said it was worth checking out, and I think that's... That's an incredible testament to the type of influence that he had and the type of knowledge that he had, too. I'm going to also bring on from 411 Mania, Jeremy Thomas. Jeremy, we appreciate you joining us, buddy. Is your mic still muted? Can't hear you. 
Still cannot hear you, Jerry. <laughs> there we go. There we Hello? go. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, you've got the, you've, sorry, I... You've got the Steve Cook just headset thing here. Come on, guys. Well, there's Walmart, buddy. Oh, yes, uh, I have not years used about. Skype in years. I've, got, I've gone full Zoom well before Zoom was a cool thing. So <laughs> I've got to figure all this stuff out. Uh, we appreciate you joining I, us, Jeremy. I, I know you, you and Larry have been uh, close for a long time. You've been with 411 uh, for my, my years are very bad. Larry hit me over the head with a chair too many times. I have CTE. Uh, <laughs> but you guys have uh, been together for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I've been – I started at 411 as just a reviewer in movies uh, in 2008. And then I started doing uh, a news posting – and 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 all that stuff in 2010 i think is what i looked at when i was going back to do to 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 write the tribute um which which blew my mind that it's been 10 years um but yeah we we worked together for a long long time and it's it's funny because uh, it in a world where um you know, I think people tend to down downplay like internet friends, quote unquote. Um, he was probably a, 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 as close as a friend of mine as just about anybody I know in real life. Almost, uh, I certainly interacted with him more than anybody in anybody that I that I interacted with in person. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's been a bad week. Uh, it, it certainly has. I mean, the the news hit on Monday, and yeah. like I, I was, you know, the the Shad Gaspard stuff came out Monday morning, and yeah. like that was tough to deal with. And then I saw the news about Larry, and like I was I was checked out for the day, and yeah. I was just like, all right, um. I'm good. I appreciate the the team at Fightful for giving me that the time on Monday, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm done." And that, you know, I, I talked with uh, you, Jeremy, briefly yesterday, and talked to Ashish and people we've had on the show and stuff. But it's it's been it's been rough, and I, I can't say it enough. Like again, it's been great that people have come together. Like it, it just, it, but that like that's what Larry did. Like he brought yeah. people together. Like. Uh, we were talking about earlier um cook and i became friends through larry um our buddy sam or katie and and todd bergman were on the show earlier and we're all still friends to this day um you know everyone's here brian's here jeremy sean sean you you mentioned to me like because i worked with larry you were like okay he worked with larry yeah like, it seems like he probably knows what the hell he's doing and like because of just my relationship with larry yeah, that was that was a barometer for a lot of a lot of stuff. I mean, quite frankly, we get a lot of people that are like, "Hey, what do I got to do to get into this? What do I got to do to do this?" When I saw you worked with Larry. I was like, "What more of a recommendation do I need than somebody who had worked with Larry Zonka for years?" That's and for years consistently. That was that was enough for me. That yeah, was, and then some of us just kept working with Larry Zonka forever and ever, and have not really felt need to go anywhere else because hey, we work for Larry Zonka. We're yeah, cool, you, as you, you know? said, you wrote his yeah. coattails for years, Steve Cook. That's right. I made a <laughs> living out of it, brother. Oh, it was a it's a great ride, man. Just the best ride. Yeah, I've I've heard from wrestlers within WWE that. Uh, I had mentioned Larry to me since then. I asked if, if I knew him personally, and I said, no, I didn't. And they have talked about the level of respect that they, they have for his work, too. I mean, that goes to show you. I mean, people in the company, I mean high up, are looking at this guy's work and seeing what he thinks of other programs, other products, and what he thought of them. That speaks volume to the level of work that he put out, and, and that's – that's impressive, especially in, in this line of work where so many people are so territorial about their work in the ring. Uh, they were they were reading his stuff and saying, well, 
it, it, it must have been pretty good because Larry liked it. Yeah, I don't I don't know if you were on Sean when we mentioned earlier, but like Keith Lee had a quote saying like you know Larry had three of my matches in his top ten for for WrestleMania, and like that told me I was doing things right. I mentioned I know people have like messaged Larry directly and been like, hey, what can I improve on? What can I do differently? I mean, we've seen on the the GoFundMe. This is public knowledge. Uh, Kevin Owens, Cody, uh, Malcolm Bivens all donated to the GoFundMe, yeah. and and so like it, it's just great to see the wrestling community. And I know other people on on Twitter, other wrestlers have mentioned. Uh, as fat, I know Ethan Page had something. Chris Jericho had something. So like it, it's really great to see the the wrestlers because. Yeah, Larry was a measuring stick when it came to that stuff because he watched everything and he, like, if he didn't like it, probably wasn't that good. If he loved it, it was probably really great. I saw the level of stuff that he watched and I was like, <laughs> how can I keep up with this? <laughs> like, he's watching WXW right after it drops and I'm like, man, come on! <laughs> this, is, this is not fair! <laughs> I can't do this! Jeremy, I know, but, I know you, like, you would have to, you know, he'd have reviews set for the morning or he'd have like articles mm-hmm. set for the morning or, or podcasts and stuff. And like you, you essentially got like a first peek at some of that stuff. Cause I know you do the, the late night shift on, on 411 right. and like you would, I'm sure you would just see like, all right, Zonka's got like 13 articles <laughs> set for the next two days that, that now I've got to like schedule out and, and make sure it's yeah. all good. <laughs> it would, it, it's funny. It would. There were times because, of course, he did, uh, you know, the podcast. It, there were times because when he would put the podcast in, I would go into YouTube and and put a thumbnail image on it and make sure that, that the hashtags were in there and things like that. And there were times I would be like, I, I would get up in, in or get ready to go to sleep or something. I tend to be very much a night person, but I would get, go to go to sleep like late in the morning or something. Or, or get up early and look and be like, damn it, I have to do this right now because it would get in at literally <laughs> any time in the day. Um, and yeah, the, the, in terms of the stuff, like you would go in and look at the schedule of like what's coming up and you, uh, I was literally just scheduling, uh, uh, other stuff, other, other video reviews, other column stuff around what what Larry had in because if Larry put something in the schedule, uh, you know, after, after, um, uh, he stepped back from, from his editor stuff, he was, he was just doing the columns and reviews. So I was, you know, doing all the editing stuff on that. But if he put one of his columns in on it for a particular time and a particular time, that was that thing that, that was when that thing was going live. And I was scheduling everything else around that. You you mentioned like it could come at odd hours, and I know Jeremy, you yeah. stay up until like I feel like three or four <laughs> at the very least. Sometimes, <laughs> so, sometimes longer, but yeah, yeah. I because I, I would get the emails, and you're like, "Yep, going through these podcasts," and then <laughs> finally, you're like, "All right, finish some stuff, scheduled some stuff." And I know yep. Larry, we were talking about it earlier. Like Larry didn't sleep either, like ever. Um, when, yeah, how could he have? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Like he, we were talking about uh, with Brian. Like Brian and Larry were always up, like reviewing the the New Japan shows, and like Larry would, he would watch like those Road Two shows, like if they were live on New Japan World. Like he was watching the Ro- I'm like, dude, yeah. it's a bunch of multi man. You like they can wait until mornings. Like nah, like I gotta watch it right now. And Sean, you're already he's like he's he uh, reviewed WXW and stuff. Like if it was wrestling. He he was going to consume it. I, I'm gonna keep telling this same story because I find it fascinating. There, there's a show on Hulu. It's like Dojo Wrestling or something, and it was oh, it was gosh. taped like three Dojo years Pro. ago. It had nothing to do with anything nowadays. And Larry's like, I'm gonna review it like it's wrestling. I'm gonna watch it. I'm just like, all right, all right, dude. <laughs> like if that's what you want to do, like this was. If it was wrestling, he wanted to consume it because because this is what he loved. I physically don't. I I don't know how he physically, like, cr- like like in terms of like time space continuum, got, watched every show and reviewed every show for WrestleMania weekends. Yeah, every <laughs> single one. I don't yep. know how that was actually possible within the concept of time. 
<laughs> that was that when I saw that, that was literally a thing that made me step back and I was like, okay, maybe maybe I can scale it back because I ain't doing that. <laughs> right? That is not gonna happen ever. Uh, uh, let me bring on from uh, 411 Mania. Uh, does comic book writing's been there forever as well? The Goose, Steve Gustafson. Steve, we appreciate you, joining us, buddy. Uh, th- thanks for the uh, thanks for invite the invite. Uh, yeah, appreciate man. being here, hearing the good stories. Yeah, man, we are just uh, remembering Larry. So go ahead, the floor is yours. Any memories of Larry? Uh, I mean. Trying to pick just one, of course, I'm sure everybody has the same problem. It's hard to pick one or even just a couple. Um, he's always, he and I, you know, he did mostly wrestling and I was over in the movies and TV section, but I would do call ins sometimes because of my uh, infamous China interviews where uh, I, I actually had a conversation about him with that because I interviewed China, I believe it was either four or five times. And of those times, I had to delete at the request of her manager three of them because she was such intoxicated or some other mood altering drug and uh larry wanted more details on that if you just like i said i can only tell him so much on, on the podcast but you know person to person i told him the whole story of what was going on with china and i just remember him laughing 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 but then he was just like this is not funny this is really sad i was like yeah it is sad man like <laughs> Having uh, you know, trying to talk to uh, China, not being able to understand her, and, and then um, I'd ask her a question, she would never answer the question, but then she would end up answering the question after the next question. So, but, but uh, you know, he was a uh, this great guy. I mean, I'm not saying anything anybody doesn't know. Just everything about him was just. And I think what, what I think with me at least, it's the um, it's now my routines. My routine is is uh is is done i look forward to you know tuesday mornings and you know wednesday after uh after aew you know dynamite and all those things just to see what he said what he wrote about and now you know it's it's not there anymore and it's something i'm like you know it, it hit me harder than i thought because it was such an ingrained part of my life of seeing his words his insights and stuff and now that's uh now that's not there anymore yeah, um, that that's one thing um, Brian mentioned as well is like Monday night after Raw, yeah, we were all checking for Larry's Raw review. Like, okay, was Raw actually good? Was it was it actually boring? You know, what, what did Larry have to say? About I, I would it? always check with Larry to see if Raw was if it's just me and my disdain for three hours of, of that show, or if it's actually like really bad. And I was always, I would always check Larry to make sure it's not just like my <laughs> inherent biases or whatever that I didn't like the show. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna kick, all this. I'm gonna kick Sean off the call because I want him to get back to work. Um, he needs to do something <laughs> today. Sean, we hey. appreciate you coming on, buddy. Thanks for having me on. And again, uh, I drew a lot of inspiration from Larry's work, even though I didn't have the the good fortune of having a. a professional or personal relationship with him he was always super nice super cool to me and i appreciated that and uh like i said i have never seen a better reviewer of wrestling than him than him especially all of you and with that i bid you adieu <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Fair point. laughs> uh, um, steve like i mean we we've known each other for a long like th- this is what you know larry brought people together like i i still talk to to steve to this day we actually met last november um and like i wouldn't know you without larry like the 411 like him bringing this team together like we wouldn't know each other yeah that's absolutely right i mean uh, i've i've spoken to you know especially i guess in the last few days a lot of um a lot of guys at 411 mania past and present like george and uh, Chad and all those guys. And we've always been talking about doing like a big 401 Mania reunion, getting everybody together. And I said um, last night on Facebook, well, let's just, just do a Zoom call. Let's try to get as many people as we can onto Zoom and start with that. And then we can figure out where we're going to hold this thing, where we're going to have it um, with everything going on. But, yeah, you're right. He, this, this site's brought together a lot of great personalities, a lot of great people who I consider like, you know, good friends, solid friends. You know, I've never met 
the majority of them. They're just people I know I can just chat with or reach out to. I can reach out to you on, on you know, I texted you and uh, just to chat. And, uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things where you're just like kind of makes you open your eyes and realize, you know, what you have and what you lost. And it's all cliche, but it's, it's all very true. Yeah, I never got to never got to meet Larry Zonka. The closest we came to meeting was that he uh, he came over to Kingsport, Tennessee, for a Chikara show many years ago. I don't remember exactly what year it was. Whatever year Chikara is running down in the southeast for whatever reason, and unfortunately, Kingsport, Tennessee, is not exactly very close <laughs> to Edgewood, Kentucky, and there aren't exactly a lot of great roads that will take you from Edgewood to uh, Kingsport. <laughs> And the car I was driving at the time was not exactly the type of vehicle that would be trusted to go on those roads for that amount of distance. So, unfortunately, I did not get to make that trip. And, you know, you always kind of hold out hope that someday maybe, you know, things will be different and circumstances will be better. And unfortunately, that just never never came to pass. Yeah, yeah being able to uh, meet Larry um, and, and, you know, hang out his his family was always so gracious to me i i would um come over there and i'll, I'll finish my story in a second but i'm gonna bring on uh jerome cuson uh from 411 jerome we're just you know sharing our memories and we appreciate you uh you coming on with us oh, um i think your mic's still muted we cannot hear you jerome trying to work on that there we go there we go. There we go. Dr. Joe. Well, it was there. Oh, well, we did for a second. Yeah, and he took his headset off. <laughs> this is uh, what the video portion helps us with. You know, we can kind yes. of see what y'all are yes. doing. It does. Fortun- fortunately, none of this is actually on video. It's just going to be yeah. complete <laughs> audio. Uh, Jerome oh. just uh, bounced out. Uh, but uh, it, do- okay. it does help. We can all see each other. Everyone can see that none of us have shaved and we're all just <laughs> growing old. <laughs> Yeah. If, if yeah, I didn't have my my yeah. beard in like a bun here, you could just see how mangled it is. Um, but but yeah, I, I I just forgot to put on my video, so I'm just here with, with audio. Yeah, Brian, you you're what is your avatar for Ear- Earthbound? Earthbound. It's a Super Nintendo game from oh, okay. like 30 <laughs> okay. years ago. Okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I I'm a fan of it. I haven't played it in forever, but I I've kept the same avatar for like decade i haven't changed it <laughs> yeah ever since i got skype my avatar has been uh david caruso from csi Miami. yes <laughs> i have no idea why <laughs> I, that particular one. I have no idea why I just uh he had the, the glasses down i guess it looked like eh, yeah it works That's it used awesome. to be it used to be a meme like a very popular meme yeah mm. yeah back in the day hey becky lynch back before, brought it back, back before like for a week were even really a thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, I, I was, what I was, I'm saying is we're old. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was telling that like, I, I did have the pleasure of meeting him and, and staying over there and like he, his family was always so gracious and, you know, we all knew him professionally, but one thing a lot of people point out is like just how much he loved his family and like he was, you know, always tweeting about his kids, always tweeting about like how proud he was of his kids. Even like in columns, he, he would mention Hannah and Alex and, you know, he did the podcast with, uh, with Christy for, for the longest time early on there. And, you know, they were, anytime I was over there, like they, they just made me feel like part of, like part of the family. And that's a testament to like, him being a father, the way he raised them and just like the, the environment that, that it all, you know, took place in because like I, his wife makes sweet tea and this became a, a joke between us, but like I, I tried it. It was amazing. And then like every time I came over afterwards, she literally gave me like six gallons of like homemade sweet tea to take home with me <laughs> because like, she's like, you, you said you liked it once. And so now every time you visit, like, I've just got to make sure you have enough to last you a lifetime <laughs> anytime you leave. Like, that's the kind of, like, that's the kind of people they are. And, and like, that's an, the product of, you know, Larry raising them and, and being with them and everything. But like, I always felt like family every time I stayed over there. And, um, yeah, uh, Jerome, Jerome is back. I think his mic is still technically muted. But if uh, Jerome, if you can hear us, um, 
you're, you're more than welcome to. There we go. More than welcome to the chat. Share your share your uh, memories of Larry. Uh, thank you. Uh, te- I love technology, especially, <laughs> especially when it works. Um, I believe that that is the mantra of this entire lockdown: is that you know we have all had trouble with microphones, doing podcasts, working from home, and there's a lot of. Uh, I don't know if you guys have done a lot of Zoom meetings, but it's one yeah. of those things. There's a lot of, uh, can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? No. So um, in, in amidst all of this, I, feel, I thought it might be nice to uh, start off with a little, a little bit of Zoom or Skype meeting humor. Um, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know, these uh, these first uh, 48 hours have just been really difficult. Um, you know, it's been, it's been a lot. You know, reading about the Chad Gaspard situation amidst all of this has certainly just been – um, you know, that's been a part of this as well, because you never want to see somebody die before the age of 40 at any age, but let alone uh, before the age of 40. So, you know, I think it's really important to to mention that. And then there's there was the Owen Hart special last night, Dark Side of the Ring. And just I mean, that was a very emotional experience anyway. Uh, but Larry and I were supposed to review and talk about that show on a podcast tomorrow. So that just was like another layer that was added on to it. So it's just been a weird last couple of days. And, you know, I think that what, what has really made me feel so much better is that people have been donating to the GoFundMe and it's not just people who knew Larry, it's people within the industry, the people who have donated within the industry. I think that's great. And even just the people who read Larry and are donating five, ten, twenty dollars they didn't know this person, but I think that is a great gesture of goodwill that even if you didn't know the man, the fact that he provided you with content and the fact that he provided you with an understanding of pro wrestling. I mean, I think that's really just been, that's been a great sight to see. Yeah. Um, we've, you know, we, we've we've discussed like it's very heartwarming to see everybody come together, and it, the circumstances are awful. That this is why we've come together. But it is, like you mentioned, wrestlers have have said different things, uh, posted on social media. Various people, various wrestlers have have donated. Various people in the industry have donated. We'll have the the GoFundMe link in the description on the podcast um but it's it's been great to see the community really really come together uh i i wish it was under better circumstances yeah 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 jerome you mentioned that you know you you know you and larry have been doing podcasts and uh, you were supposed to do the the dark side of the of the ring review. Steve Cook mentioned earlier that you got you guys were supposed to record. I mean, you guys did the Wednesday Night Wars podcast, right, Cook? That's right. And I think, I guess, would you have been doing Dark Side one after that? Or would that have been a different time that you guys did that? Well, was- typically he was typically he was recording with Steve on Wednesday nights, and then Larry and I would record on Thursdays in the uh, in the early evenings. I just figured Larry was recorded with Cook at like one, and then recorded with you at like four. <laughs> I mean, uh, not unreasonable. Um, unlike Larry Zonka, I sleep. <laughs> um, and I, I did, that that is a compliment to the, and it is a testament to the fact that he was up at all hours and would record and write reviews that. <laughs> I like my eight hours of sleep. I'm never the type of person who would stay up in the middle of the night to watch new Japan shows. Um, but you know, I think that that's just a testament to, and his commitment to really loving wrestling and just wanting to be a part of it. And, you know, one of the things that when this lockdown first started, one of the things that I was thinking to myself is how am I going to fill up my time? Because, you know, there's so much that there's so much time in the day and it's not like I'm really going out that much. So I, you know, I had this idea of podcasting with Larry. We we've, we've done it on and off over the years, but no, never like a project or never something where we were doing it on a consistent basis. So I asked Larry, I was like, "Is there a topic that we could talk about that would be interesting uh, for the podcast or for for the website?" And he suggested Dark Side of the Ring, and we've basically we have been recording for the last nine weeks or so. And I don't know 
I mean, it's just unbelievable to me that that's like over the last eight weeks that we've been recording and, you know, we would talk and chit chat before and after and he would talk a lot about his family and he would talk a lot about, you know, not sleeping and, you know, various health issues that he's gone over. But I mean, Larry was always just an extremely positive person. And I'm really glad that I got to spend, you know, a good solid couple months just hanging out with Larry, talking with Larry, and reviewing Dark Side of the Ring, which admittedly is not the lightest of content, but it was just great to talk about wrestling with Larry and talk, just talking with him, I think, made the this quarantine, made this lockdown just a little bit better. Yeah, um, 100%. Like, Larry, when, when after his, his leg amputation, he obviously had to um, go through that and rehab, but, like, he... He was ready to get back to work immediately. I think he knew, like, the writing might slow down, and it didn't. Like, it, it never slowed down. Uh, but I think he thought the writing was going to slow down, and, like, that's what kind of birthed the podcast and everything. And and I feel really fortunate that he reached out to me and, and wanted to do uh, the podcast with me and then started doing it with other people as well because, like, Larry just – always wanted to talk about wrestling like he was like okay let's review these shows all right there's nothing to review let's do dark side let's do you know old shows like whatever we can do like let's just keep producing content let's watch as much as we can and like the man was an absolute machine when it came to that stuff absolutely yes 100 percent. definitely that is true and i mean yeah i think that The other thing that he did is he just was able to facilitate extremely well just coverage of professional wrestling. You know, I was talking with uh, someone who used to write for 411 last night, uh, Ari Berenstein, and I think that one of the things that I really appreciated about Larry was not just that he reviewed older shows in WWE, because, I mean, that's something that is done, and I certainly understand why, especially at this point, but... You know, he was also not afraid to give Ring of Honor coverage when Ring of Honor was an independent company. And the fact that he allowed that to happen on the website and then he eventually himself would start reviewing Ring of Honor and just start reviewing all these random independent promotions as the streaming capabilities and it became just easier for Larry to access these shows. That's when you really started to see him expand and review Ring of Honor and WWN. I know that specifically WWN was extremely appreciative of the fact that he was reviewing uh, their shows because they were not getting a lot of reviews uh, during certain points. So I think it's I think it's really amazing to me uh, just the, not only that the coverage that he was doing, but that he was facilitating coverage of a lot of smaller independent companies as well. And the connections that he's made to so many wrestling fans and so many writers. I mean, just think of how many former 411 writers there are out there in this world and staff members, including myself. You know, I don't really write as much about pro wrestling, but. I mean, Larry, regardless of whether, even if I, even if I stopped, I would still consider Larry to be, would consider Larry to be a friend and somebody that I had a great deal of, of admiration for. And, you know, I think it's a, it's sometimes I don't like this cliche about, oh, you can't replace this person. But, you know, I look at Larry and his output and it's like, man, you really can't replace him, right? You can't, one person cannot replace Larry Zonka. Yeah. Who is going to watch it's all these literally, shows? I can attest to that. <laughs> it is literally not possible. <laughs> like, we, that's that's one of the things that, as an unfortunate, you know, we're, we're last thing that we want to think about, but we're having a look at the live coverage and, and things like that, and we're reaching out to a bunch of a bunch of people who are so we can get that sorted out. I'm doing coverage of impact. I've never done live coverage before because we just, it's not possible to have one person do all of those shows. Um, so it's, so yes, it is very little. And then of course, just, just in, in a Larry fashion, it's not possible. Um, I mean, even, even if you could find somebody who just did those, could do every one of those shows, it's, it's funny. Like I went, I went to go watch last night after I got done with with, with work, and 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 sort of detoxed a little bit. Uh, I, I went to go sit down and watch TV and Dark Side 
was was obviously on the DVR. I was like, do I even want to watch this right now after the week we've had? And I ultimately was like, yes, because I'll go ahead and do it. And it was interesting because while I was watching it, just because... uh, Yes, it's a, it, that that particular story is is is, is particularly tragic um, and 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 depressing. But I kept thinking about like they kept talking about you know how much Owen loved wrestling and and how much passion he had for his family and and everything. And literally, I just kept thinking about about Larry and. You would think that would be a real downer, and 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 it was in a respect, but it also reminded me how much he loved all this stuff, and it helped me appreciate that episode more because he was able to share his love of wrestling so much, and his love of family and everything. I'm gonna bring on uh, James Tomlinson. Uh, James, we're just talking about Larry, sharing memories. So the the floor is yours with that. I think your mic is still muted. This is just the the running theme of the yep. show. Is <laughs> you've got to have a muted mic to start with. <laughs> How was that? There we go. Yeah, there there's we go. I will. Uh, I'll just say this because it's and I talked to Steve about this earlier. And I'll share a very funny story about Steve Cook. Uh, he was writing, I believe it was Cook's Corner. Right, Steve? Sure. Is that right? It was Cook's <laughs> Corner. And he he plugged, you know, hey, you want to be a writer for 411? Come and look at all this. So I did, and I sent some to Steve, and he answered me. And I said, oh my god, Steve Cook! It's internet celebrity guy answering me. The one person's ever said such a thing, trust me. Just out. And he said, just reach out and touch Larry Zonka and see, you know, what happens there. So I did, and uh, I said, hey, I'd be so happy to review Bite This. <laughs> you guys remember that? Oh my god. Yeah, I'll be the Bite This reviewer. And, uh, you know, I was I was so excited when Larry was like, yeah, you can do that. I thought, oh, my goodness, now I'm on 411 and Larry Zonka talked to me and Steve Cook talked to me. And then eventually I realized I was just reviewing Bite This. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Bite but... This. Hey, you moved on and up to upwards there, didn't you? But I, but I, I did it, and uh, you know the the great thing about Larry was that he always had time for it. You know, because you would, I don't, I don't know how many people had him on Messenger or had his phone number or anything like that. But I did at the time, and I'm sure Steve did at the time, and he would take as much time talking to me about bite this as he would the round table discussions in the forums before you know penguin got them all shut down or whatever the case was there and we just had all these guys like me and steve and i i think jeremy might have been back there i know Ari was back there and uh you know scott rutherford and steven randall and you know we just had this little group of people and uh, George Cirrus, who's now a published author, and of course J.P. Prague, and we met all these people together on this little group. And at the end of the day, it was all because Larry just said, "Hey, how you guys doing?" And uh, he was he was amazing for that. And uh, I don't know again if anyone else knows, but I know Steve will know that. You know, one of the best uh, things you could get from Larry was like one in the morning, and it'd be a cheers, <laughs> right? Yeah. We yeah. we yell about uh, you know the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Cincinnati Bengals or the Detroit Lions. If you 
you know, he just hit you up and he still made sure that he was taking care of Christy and taking care of, at the time, it was just one girl. It wasn't even two. And it just evolved and evolved and evolved. And then we got some people who, you know, maybe weren't that great for the site. But then we got like a Len Archibald and we got a Dino Z and we got all these amazing writers. And a big part of that was, you know, Larry. And I know how they felt about it because that was me when I emailed Steve Cook and felt <laughs> felt like, it was so awesome that Steve Cook emailed me back. Uh, still love, hey, I still read it, buddy. I love you to death. I mean, you should feel good. There's a lot of people I don't email back, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to bring on uh, Ari Bernstein. Uh, Berenstein. I, he hit me if I said that wrong. I apologize, Ari. Um, no, come on. But I, I appreciate you joining hey, us. I, I, uh... I'm glad that you guys invited me in. First of all, let me say that uh, I come in unmuted because I am a professional. <laughs> wow. You are the only one. Even if I'm, even if I'm retired from writing, <laughs> um, so to speak. But no, um, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy that you guys – how's everybody doing? It's good to speak to everybody. I think this might yeah. be the first time I'm actually like speaking face-to-face or Skype-to-Skype, really. So I hope everybody's doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. We all wish it was under better circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I know everybody was like always kind of hyping up, hopefully, like a 411 meetup or something. But, uh, you know, for it, it's, I wish it was not under these circumstances. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I spent a lot of time, I actually just spoke with uh, Jerome Cusan yesterday. He's getting more people to do tributes and stuff as well, recording audio. So I, I went for a good 15, 20 minutes on, on Larry, but. Um, I wanted to express my like real happiness that like uh, the GoFundMe page for his family is doing so well. And, you know, you've got Kevin Steen and I think Cody and others donating and even just readers, regular readers of his column and strangers, people like us who are part of his uh, writing team. Um, you know, it, it, it matters that people are donating um in honor of him to his kids to his family um because you know it, it's it's good to have the understanding that he's he meant something to all of us in some way or another so um you know larry uh, uh it's funny because i for some of that interview i was um looking at some old emails because i saved everything I still have an AOL account. I say just about everything because I'm a pack rat in some ways. And some some of his emails were just, you know, it was just like the attaboys, the, you know, you rock or your 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 column kicked ass this week. Um, and I know that, you know, that was really appreciated that he would read our columns and read my column and liked it and um, would always uh, root for us to succeed. And would get, you know, when we got pub um, from the, the wrestling promotions that we covered, even better. Um, I actually just opened up an email right now uh, where he was complaining to me about uh, the fact that I and JD Dunn got quoted from on the ROHWrestling.com page regarding Man Up. He says, I'm very happy for you guys and you deserve it. But shit, man, I cannot buy any lover there. As I said, I've gotten blasted for not getting the show and underrating it. The fuck? Part of me doesn't care, but for once, maybe some validation would be cool. Um, and I feel like that's funny because also with the Jerome uh, tribute, I have the other half of that, the punchline to that, when uh, the ROH forum basically said, you should trust Larry Zonka more than Ari. I mean, Ari posts over here and is an admitted ROH bot and isn't exactly an unbiased <laughs> journalist. Oh so my he god! Got, <laughs> he got his dub. He definitely got his dub. Um, and I mean, like I, I'm sure you guys just talked for so long about you know he, him being a workhorse and like a leader, uh, writing column after column after column. It took you know I, I burned out of writing columns because I put so much into it, but like Larry just kept going, kept going and kept going, and and that's great. Um, there's this archive of stuff online where you, if you want to go back and find what he thought about a show, it's all up there now. 
So uh, I'm really happy that he never, even if he, maybe he did burn out, I don't know, but he kept going. Um, he never showed it. Uh, I'm really uh, happy to have talked to him on the podcast that we recorded or just over the internet uh, through Twitter. I mean, even, you know, just if it was just a joke or something, um, it was really cool that, um, you know, I was not a part of the media. I wasn't, I'm not a part of the current 411 family, but he would talk to and respond to me, to, to my buddy Chris, to anybody and everybody. And it didn't matter. He found the time for it. Uh, he did it. Um, and, and he just seemed to have such a love for, for wrestling. And, and I know you guys have talked about his love for his family. Um, it, it, it meant a lot that, um, you know, there was somebody like him in charge of 411. Um, a good dude and someone who was a real wrestling fan, but also, um, you know, someone who wasn't afraid to say if something sucked, wasn't afraid to say if something was good. So, yeah, um, like I've, I've said many times in the last, like, 48 hours, like, my heart goes out to his family. Um, and I really hope that um, just the fact that everybody is here remembering him, he's gotten so many positive um, memoriams from from Voices of Wrestling, from the Wrestling Observer and Figure Four uh, online, and wrestlers saying good things about him. I mean, these are, uh, I traded all back. Like I said, I said this on Jerome. I traded all, uh, Jerome's uh, podcast. I take I traded all back if we could get him back, but it does say something that everybody has come out to support him like this. So, uh, really appreciate it. I think mm-hmm. it says a lot that Austin Aries even said something positive. Yeah, about <laughs> that's yeah. true. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, no curmudgeon Austin Aries. You so mentioning? I love, I, let me let me say I love an ROH as yeah. an unbiased journalist. You mentioning that he was looking for ROH validation explains so much last year of us doing the podcast and him being like, there's an ROH show this week. I mean, you, you follow mm-hmm. ROH, Ari, and like the shows mm-hmm. last year were terrible. Like they had no momentum. <laughs> it was just, it was just god awful. Um, yeah, they, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And anytime we had to do a podcast, it's like ROH has got shows this weekend. Like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna review it. Uh, on we're gonna review it for the podcast. We're gonna preview it for the podcast, and I'm like, dude, who is watching these ROH shows? Like, I do not want to watch these ROH shows. I don't know what's yeah, going we're on. We're saying that in 2003, also. <laughs> who was watching yeah. these ROH shows? I would, he was like, nope, gotta watch it. Like, it's out there. I mean, he wasn't looking for ROH ballot. He would watch everything regardless. But it, for my mind, it helps explain why he wanted to wanted me to watch so much ROH as well. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it'll get better when they get back to it. But you know, it's it's. Um, it, I don't. It, I don't even know how to express that. Like he, it, he wasn't. I don't think looking for validation as a writer. I think he just. I think he wanted to cover everything because he loved everything about wrestling in, in a way. Um, even the stuff he complained about, like it just it's the way he laughed it off or would make a joke about it. It's like. Come on, guys. You know you can do better than this. And uh, he'd have a very, like, uh, nice way of – he'd have very unnice ways of saying things suck and also very nice ways that were funny. Uh, I'm going to bring on one half of the Impact World Tag Team Champions, Ethan Page, is joining us on the show. Ethan, your mic is muted currently, but if you can hear us, the floor is yours. Oh, let me turn the uh... – Hey. the video on too I, sorry guys no no you're fine <laughs> we appreciate yeah. you we appreciate you coming on man uh no worries uh i was trying to figure out how to get it done as quick as possible i figured it was like a time crunch thing but uh we've been here for like two hours for. and we might be here for another two hours so <laughs> that's awesome has anyone brought up that he hated all my work in evolve <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get there yet, but uh, if you want to talk about that, go right ahead. Uh, that, honestly, I, I can't stay long, but I had a very specific story I wanted to, to tell because uh, it was like a victory for me as a performer because uh, he hated pretty much everything I did when I worked for Gabe. And then he didn't do too much about Impact, but for some reason, 
He must have been in, like insanely bored, or the only person that ever watches Explosion. And he wrote, <laughs> and he wrote a review of my match with Cody Deaner uh, from Explosion. And that match, it was the house show. like we we film television, so we wanted to close the house show with like the good guy winning and just like a basic wrestling match. And it was in Windsor, so we were both Canadians and the North at the time were like getting really good heat. So they put, for some reason they put us out last after like four hours of television tapings. And Scott Demore was just like, honestly, guys just go out there and have fun. Like, I'm not really expecting anything crazy. Uh, just enjoy yourselves. And when he wrote the review and like, it was the greatest compliment to me because he couldn't even express how much he loved it. And I was like, this is something that, I genuinely just winged it and I was just having fun doing my job. And that was the thing that he fucking complimented me on. Not, <laughs> not me, you know, overthinking everything that goes into with Darby Allen or the feud or my entire thing with Gargano getting yelled at about how to do my promos or, you know, my two star matches on all of these technical wrestling pay-per-views. No, no, just go out there, dick around <laughs> on television and I will write the most glowing review possible. And honestly, that this is like my favorite time of my pro wrestling career because I feel like I'm the most comfortable right now and I could just have fun and do shit like that. So for him, after like seeing all the reviews that he wrote for me from the past to give me that compliment, like that was a personal victory. So I, I would like I definitely want to <laughs> I want to point out that Larry would review the Impact One Night Only Wrestling uh, those yep. shows, and I feel like more people read those reviews than actually watched the shows. Probably <laughs> <laughs> true. I mean, you're not wrong, probably. Hey, hopefully he turned a couple people into fans. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I'm I sure, mean, yeah, he did. but go. he was committed was to it. Committed like, that's it. the thing is that he would literally review everything. So, Impact yeah. Wrestling is part of that. And uh, that's how he started with 411. So, I think that's a testament to him the fact that he would give the time to these shows that nobody was really paying attention to. And, you know, I think that again speaks to his work ethic and just how great of a wrestling fan he was. Hey, and you know what? I'm not counting how many stars Dave Meltzer gave me, so. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll close off with that, guys. I'm going to go for a walk with my family, but uh, uh, enjoy the time, you know, remembering this. And uh, from a performer, just know that I appreciate all the shit you guys do and that he did. And, like, without you guys, like, spreading the word about everything that we're trying to, you know, create in between the ropes or backstage doing promos and stuff like that and, yeah, just it's appreciated. Whether you get a lot of negative flack from wrestlers or not, I'll be the one that like you guys are in the wrestling business to me, and he was too. So I, we lost someone from the wrestling business, and when I tweeted that out, I meant it. Thanks, we guys. we appreciate Thank you, you joining us, uh, Ethan, yeah. on on really short notice, and you know, stay safe up there in Canada. And again, thanks again for doing this, buddy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. There we that's go. A, Cameo appearance by Ethan Page. Yeah, that's it. That that that's an interesting thing. That he, Larry very much me in terms of his reviewing, and I know that the this comparison is is um is a little bit how, but I thought of Larry as a wrestling reviewer, <clears throat> the way I thought of of Ebert as a movie reviewer. Uh, not just in terms of like greatest, but in terms of he very much reviewed stuff. Like like Ebert was always very famous for for reviews that people sort of thought odd because he would give uh, a three star review to like uh, uh, the day after tomorrow or, or or stuff like that, and and his his whole standpoint and sort of. How I I I sort of when I started doing movies, I looked at that as an example of what to do. Was he would review stuff based on what's the audience for this and what's this trying to convey? And so Larry was the same way in that you know if a show was being presented as this is a high 
technical masterpiece show. This is presented for a very specific audience. He reviewed it in that way. If it was intended to be more of a comedic style or more of a pure entertainment style, he reviewed it that way. Um, as opposed to, to, to some people who will just, they'll only look at the work rate or they will only look at the promos. Uh, he was very inclusive in that way. Um, which, which was, I think, a very good example for that. I, that I hope a lot of people followed as they get into into doing what he did. Yeah, and um, to follow up on Ethan's point, there, where basically the, I guess, Larry's favorite match that Ethan ever had was one where he's dicking around on the house show. <laughs> no, um, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't exactly. have to do fifteen thousand flips, and you know, you didn't have to throw forty five thousand stiff chops to make. Larry, like your match. No, when we went to a NXT house show in 2016, I think it was right after uh, Nakamura had joined. It was uh, right after that WrestleMania, and the main event was a uh, Nakamura and Balor against Corbin and I don't recall, but somebody else. Um, and like I remember sitting there with him, and I'm like you're not going to like rate these matches and like look for, Oh man, he didn't grab that hold very well. Like you're not going to like technically break this down while we're sitting here and trying to have a good time. Right. And he's like, no. And like, I've never seen him just like have so much fun just watching wrestling because he's like, it's a house show. These guys are out here just kind of doing what they want. There's no real restrictions or anything. And like, they're all having fun. The crowd's into everything. Um, but that, that memory would just like always stick with me of, of going to that house show with him and him just like enjoying himself. Just, he didn't have to review anything. He was just there to like watch wrestling as a fan. I mean, maybe that's what we need more of in wrestling. Just go out there and dick around. I would not be opposed to that. <laughs> no. Well, just to, just to follow up on what Ethan had said when he talked about how the you know, wrestling writers and reviewers, you know, are part, I'm glad that he's he acknowledged, you know, us as part of an ecosystem. And I also want to uh, ask, I mean, I don't know if you guys maybe have even mentioned this beforehand, but um, I also think, wasn't Larry a professional wrestler as well on the independent scene locally for, for his town? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he was. Um, great. Yeah. And I remember him writing early on in, in his columns about his experience doing that. Um, and, you know, Again, he's him, like Matthew of Sorcina, and I'm sure quite a few others who wrote for 411, you know, or who are in the business, you know, you can you can be a professional wrestler and you can also write as a reviewer um, or a commentator. You know, you don't have to do one or the other, not do both. Uh, you know, just like uh, Tom Waller is an MMA uh, star and a wrestler. Uh, and also participates on audio podcasts with uh, with Ryan. You know, uh, Larry came from a place where he trained, he did matches, and then he went into wrestling writing and became an editor. Um, and he has that background, that experience, and had that whenever he wrote. And so that's important. Again, the opposite. You don't have to have been a wrestler to write about wrestling because I've never taken a bump, although, um, you know, uh, my my so few of my friends have and they don't necessarily talk highly about taking bumps one bump and they're done or you know uh, training with uh, people in Brooklyn here you know uh, I have a former student who is going to be try is trying to train right now um, but we can you know you can be participating in the wrestling world in many different ways and I think it's important to acknowledge that for sure for sure the the biggest criticism you know, a lot of people want to have is like, you know, some wrestlers are like, we've never wrestled. So, you know, you can't judge us. This is not, this is not just wrestling, like acting, whatever. And basically yeah. any line of work when it comes to criticism is like, well, you've never done this. So who are you to judge this? Like Larry did have that experience. So he was speaking from that experience along with just his years and years of, of knowledge and, and watching the product. Yeah, I was talking to Jerome last night, actually, and uh, he asked me what my favorite Larry Zonka com was. And the thing that came up to me was way back in the day on that site we started on, TWTF, he would have some articles about his adventures as tremendous Tom Lawrence. And he would talk about the various things that he would be doing as a pro wrestler. And just 
all sorts of uh, interesting information that I found useful. And I feel uh, kind of sad that that website no longer exists, uh, was hacked by some, some internet terrorists or whatever, so nobody can ever read those things. So I'm plugging something nobody can read. But I enjoy it. <laughs> Go on the, the Wayback Machine website. Maybe it's there. I don't know. That's right, twtf.com. Give it, give it a look. It might be there. <laughs> Tremendous Tom Lawrence was his name. Um, I guess we're winding down now. I've sent out a couple of uh, messages to to some people to see if uh, they're able to join us. But we've been going on for two hours now. So I appreciate everyone. Yeah, go ahead, James. You guys want to know my favorite column? Yes. With Lake Of course. Of course. Sure. And I'm not sure who was a part of it. The roast of Larry Zonka. <laughs> I don't know who got the email that said, hey, I want you to be a part of this roast. But when we were able to just take everything that we knew about him and throw it at him, like it was Comedy Central. <laughs> and he took it in stride, and it was one of the, it was just one of the funniest things that I've ever read. Uh, I was probably horribly unfunny, but everybody else was tremendously funny. I'm positive Cook was in there. Oh, oh yeah, I, I sold it out, brother. Sold it out. They're <laughs> hanging from the rafters. <laughs> um, oh, and confirmed, by the way, TWTF is in archive.org. Okay, okay I, so saw you play, I saw you, you, you play. Have play. Two, you have to go back to 2004, but there are tremendous try rates and three R's and <laughs> et cetera that you can find there. All right, yes, yeah, so look that up, twtf.com. That's awesome. Way, was it Wayback Machine Archive? Wayback Machine Archive. Wayback machine. All right. yeah, so, everybody, everybody look, that look that up. So one of the things, I saw a comment in the GoFundMe, which, look, reading the comments can sometimes be a bad thing, but I think this is a really <laughs> good idea. Uh, someone suggested that uh, to start putting together, like, e-books or something like that if the family needs to needs to fundraise. So I think that would be a really nice gesture too, is to get some of his reviews together and do like eBooks and things like that of his archives. So that um, I think that would be really cool too. Of course, everyone can go to the four one 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 archives, but I think that would be a really nice gesture. And while you're all here, I wanted to mention that someone said that, and I thought it was a really good idea. Yeah, that that's certainly a great idea, Jeremy. Um, I don't know, maybe we can we can talk to Ashish, put something together with this. Possible. Yeah. Uh, but that's certainly a great idea to try to do something. I'm sure, I'm sure plenty of people would check it out, donate, buy it, however we want to do it. But, uh, whoever gave you that idea, Jerome, tell them thank you and we will try to work on something. Yeah. I mean, it's the only good comment that's ever been commented on in a, in a comment <laughs> section. It's accurate. If anything, it's amazing. The unanimity of positive comments in the uh, tributes pages that are on 411mania.com. I, I think it's like 99.99999% everybody is just posting their positive memories of Larry and you know appreciations and all that and just sh saying just how much he, that, you know they were a fan of his work or followed his work, used his work and depended on it to learn about results and uh, or, or became fans of something because they wa they read his review and they trusted his word on it. Yeah. Um, everything has been so positive, and I'm in this this current day and era. I mean, for that kind of uh, almost 100 percent positivity about Larry, um, I can't uh, express my appreciation enough for that. That's amazing. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When when the whole th when when we started putting putting articles up about like. I went in and I was like, I was in Discus admin, like, I dare you assholes. I will ban it. I will ban it. <laughs> I think total, I had to delete. I deleted two comments, and they weren't even they weren't they weren't bad trolling ones. They were just like, okay, not the time, guys. Um, but there there was, to the best of my knowledge, not a single like truly negative comment that would that 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 was posted which is insane for 411 wrestling that is a miracle <laughs> yeah 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 
<laughs> because one of the things I always needle Larry about the 411 commenters too. Like I would go out of my way to, to say something about them and to be like, Larry, don't feed the trolls. It's a bad idea. <laughs> I'd be like, Larry, just ignore them. Just leave them alone. Just let them have their fun. Let them speak into their echo chamber. But yeah, I, I, I remember that too. And Larry would always interact with them and he would post a lot of tweets complaining about them. But sometimes I'd be like, Larry, just let it go. But he's such a nice guy. He just, he just couldn't let it go. Yeah. He would, I remember when we would like do the podcast and before we would get started and Cook and Jerome, you might know this as well. Like before we get started, he'd be like, this asshole in the comments said like this and this and just like, it's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like one person. And sometimes he would tweet stuff of like, th- this person's like, oh, you didn't like so and so because, because this happened. And it's like, Larry, hey, it's okay. It- it's one person. Like there's plenty of good comments, but I mean, Jeremy, you deal with it all the time. Like the 411 comments section yeah. can be a trash fire of people. <laughs> it can be like, <laughs> I, I will give our I will give it credit like compared to a lot of sites I uh, I think that I think that we we've we've done a lot of work especially since disc is like the old days that was that was ah uh, ah uh, um, <laughs> wild like, west it was <laughs> like west. when we didn't even have the capacity to ban people yet or anything like that it was like. Going through comments was literally like an hour and a half of the day of of of, of a workshop because it was just deleting like spammed comments and like stuff that was just beyond the pale. And I think well, you know things have gotten a lot better since then. But yeah, it's like that's that's one of the things that I kind of do a lot is like when people people get banned, it gets forwarded on to me so I can look at it and say. Okay, well, you know, here's why you were banned, or et cetera, or this was done by accident, or whatever. And yeah, it's it's always it was always funny because yeah, he he would say he would say something like you know, oh this person that person, and then I would look in just out of curiosity and like yeah, ninety like there's you know especially if it was like the like one of his rev- raw reviews or pay per view reviews, there's like three hundred comments, which by is ridiculous in my mind in the first place that. Uh, that many but like maybe three four max would be bad and and those those would always get him um yeah and larry's columns like always drew the most comments because of who he was like larry larry was the draw and so people would you know they would essentially measure their opinions against larry's of like you didn't like this, you're biased. Oh, you, you like this too much, uh, stuff like that. And yeah, I, I can only imagine the work had, that had to be done for the, the comment section. And imagine the work Larry could have gotten done if he didn't read the comments. I think that's right. the biggest takeaway here. <laughs> I God. think that's the lesson of this whole podcast. Yeah. <laughs> is don't read the comments, except when TJ Hawk writes, writes a review for 401, then I specifically will go and read the comments because <laughs> the comments yelling at TJ Hawk are very entertaining. We just wore right through the comments show. on those boys. <laughs> yep. And and let us not forget when we didn't even have comments, and we we yeah. just had to call them, and then you had to put your email in there. Got something to say? <laughs> email me. <laughs> way way back before before uh, Discus came into it. Yeah, that's... you know. Personally, I found the email. Uh, I found that the emails were always a bit more positive than the uh, comments that were posted on four one one mania dot com. I feel like the people that wanted to complain yes. uh, were a lot more happy to do it in a public space. From yes. my experience. <laughs> a public space not tied to an email address that you could be responded directly back to? Yeah, yeah. I always took the, the people who emailed, I took that criticism more to heart because like, all right, you're willing <laughs> to actually take the time to email and say yeah. something. You're not just a discus user or whatever, just caught in a flood of stuff. So... I anyone who emailed I actually appreciated more for for what they had to say. On oh, their doubt about that. All right, um I've got a couple of of messages out. I don't want to keep everybody here too much longer. I know it's Wednesday night and uh some of us have uh wrestling 
to watch and whatnot. But if you guys want to kind of share some some final thoughts and whatnot, we'll we'll start wrapping it up. And if anybody pops on, great. And if not, then we'll close this thing out. I'll uh, kind of go in order. Uh, Jerome, any any final thoughts? I really want to thank you, Jeremy Lambert, for putting this together. People who listen to this podcast are going to be confused by the Jeremy, the Jeremy, and the Jerome. So I'm well. So just remember, this is Jerome. There's Jeremy Lambert. There's Jeremy Thomas. Just remember, there's, there's three different people. And there's uh, a so, James Tomlinson as well. So yep. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of J names in here. So I just want to say I, I very much appreciate uh, the work that you two put into this podcast, and I know that. Uh, Jeremy Thomas, especially having to quote unquote replace Larry. I know that it's going to be uh, just really difficult on you. And I mean, it's, it's one of those things that Larry left such an impact on so many people. And I know that that's one of the reasons that we're doing this right now is because Larry was such a great guy. Like the fact that we're doing these tributes and the written tributes and sending the money that we are to GoFundMe. If Larry was an asshole, we just wouldn't do this. And I think it says a lot that it speaks so much to his character that so many people have donated and just the quality of the memorials, you know, reading the ones on 411, like I was just in tears, just reading it. And it was, it was just very emotional. Everyone did such a beautiful job uh, right on down the line. Everyone at the 411 staff from Ari to Jeremy to, to everyone else. So I really want to say that you guys have just done a, a fantastic job and, Ashish, who is not always someone to get along with, but Ashish has done some some great stuff too. And yeah, I mean, that's what this is about. This is about Larry and just talking about what an incredible individual he is and just the impact that he's had on so many people as far as wrestling and even outside of wrestling. I mean, you know, there are people that probably watch New Japan or Ring of Honor or so many companies because of him. And that is not something that's going to go away anytime soon. So... I am just going to be forever grateful for the fact that I got to know Larry even outside of just the wrestling bubble, so to speak. And yeah, that's really all that I have to say. So thanks again, guys. Goose, any final words? I mean, just to piggyback on what everybody said, I mean, I guess you can't say that enough. Uh, What you brought up, Larry has brought a lot of us together. I think, you know, this time that we've had to reflect, not just here, on the site. I mean, while I was, uh, you know, everyone was talking, like George, you know, he just messaged me, wants me to give him a call so we can start doing something like with a little Zoom. And um, this is like, this is the uh, fruits of Larry's labors. And I think um, the best way that at least I can, and I think a few others can, is just uh, continue on with the passion that he had. Uh, continue writing what we love about, what we, uh, what we love, and uh, continue with that. But and I said it in my write-up for the uh, website for Forum Mania, like, just thank you. I wish I'd said thank you more to him when he was here and just try to do little things to keep thanking him and, um, you know, and just keep his family and them, and, um, his children, his wife, and um, in my heart and, and, you know, it's just still weird to talk about. I mean, I don't even know, like I said, it's somebody who I never really, like, I didn't have a chance to get a beer with him or anything like that, but yet he was a very important part of my life. And especially like, you know, hearing from all of you, it's especially true. And, um, yeah, it will be very, very much Lee. He'll be, he'll be missed. James. Yes. <laughs> uh, I will, uh, I'll just tell this quick story that I think embodies Larry. And that's, of course, love to Steve Cook, who got me. Internet writer that wrote me back, and then I got to Steve, and because of Steve, I met Larry, and because of Larry, I met JP, and uh, me and JP went to WrestleMania uh, 23 uh, in Detroit, because I lived in the area, and JP, he's Jewish, he has money, I don't know, he pulls out the Marriott card, (laughs) like, I don't mean that bad. Jewish people, I love you all. And he pulls out the Marriott card, and all of a sudden we're in this like VIP suite for it. And uh, God bless JP because he doesn't drink. I do. So we go to WrestleMania 23, and 
we get back and uh, stuff is going on in the room and then the activity stops in the room and then both of us, JP sober as shit, me not sober as shit, both on our laptops writing up this report for 411 for WrestleMania 23. And the reason we were doing that is because Larry needed the report. He knew we were there. He said, hey, you're there. Can you do it? So we did it. And, you know, I think it's a it's a testament any time that any of us went anywhere and made sure that we sent stuff in to 411 because we knew that it would help Larry out. And so to think about that, to think about how far everything got, and like uh, Steve said, you know, the wife and the kiddos and everything, just to, to, to go back and think about from, you know, 2001 to 2020, if, if you look at the time span and all the things that everybody did, for Larry or doing it without realizing that they were doing it for Larry until Larry wasn't around. And then you realize, shit, I was, I was drunk in a hotel room and I wrote about mess WrestleMania 23 <laughs> because I knew Larry needed it. I mean, that, that was the impact that he had on people. He just touched everyone. And, you know, if you put Larry Zonka at the bottom of a big tree and then you let the branches go. I don't think there's, I don't think there's really a perspective on how far the branches would actually go, because he's touched so many people, and then the people that he's touched touched other people, and those people touched other people, and then here you are with me and Ari and Steve and the other JTs and. Steve Cook, just sitting around talking about him, you know, 19 years later, or 20 years later, whatever it might be. Ari. Yeah. um, So, I mean, I think there's a couple things I want to end on with. Uh, One is that sort of, just to follow up on that point, is the interconnectedness of everyone. um, I think especially now in the uh, last decade in the era of social media where Larry was so accessible on, on Twitter, especially where you could just talk to him, send him something. You know, if I responded to something uh, that was a 411 post or something from him and he would get right back to me. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one like this. You know, I think other people have more, you know, in the 411 family had deeper camaraderie or deeper relationships with Larry, but, Nonetheless, when I heard from him online, um, it made me feel better because, you know, we're commiserating over a shared passion. And I think that's kind of what ties us together as 411 writers, former uh, and past or past and present. Um, and as wrestling fans and the, the larger circle, the readers and the people on, on Twitter. Um, I think the other thing I, is... Um, I guess just the outreach, the you know the impact that he's made on people because of that. I mean, even my cousin, Jay, even my cousin Jay, and I mentioned this to Jerome as well. Um, my cousin Jay and I, I met him when I was eleven or twelve, um, and we bonded over comic books and wrestling. And you know, I, I think he wrote back to me as soon as this happened that he basically he jumped jumped out of the wrestling world, but he checked for one more media and everything that Larry wrote, he read for like ever, um, which means Larry probably had as much or more impact on him as a wrestling fan than I did. So, I mean, it just goes to show you just one example. Um, and then my brother, Chris, uh, Chris Mikio, he didn't even have to talk. He talked wrestling with him, but he would talk barbecue and family. Uh, cause Chris has family, uh, a daughter of his own now. Um, so again, Larry is a wrestling writer and Larry is a hu- good human being as a person you could talk to for sure. Um, I think all of us also who started up with him at the same time uh, after the split uh, between uh, in- it became Inside Pulse and then 411 Mania modern era 
you know, we all had something to prove. Um, we all, and Larry, especially, I think we all wanted to prove we were every bit as good or better than the internet legends that came before us that I was such a huge fan of for sure. Uh, and appreciated and read their work in high school and in college it definitely helped me out. But it, you know, that era where Larry became editor was our era was the era that we kind of came through and became our own writers or our own selves in the, in the wrestling internet world, such as it is. So I know I started in the music zone. I appreciate getting my start there, but I never quite got the vocabulary or the ability to be a good music writer. Uh, I always had a passion for music and for comic books and for wrestling. But my, you know, being a wrestling writer, I think really got my chops going. It really matured me as a, as, a, as a writer in the years to come. So Larry gave me that opportunity. I'm sure he gave all of us those opportunities. I read a lot of those stories and the memoriams, and, and it's awesome. And then the final thing I just uh, would like to say to Christy and to his daughters, you know, please treasure your memories. Obviously, you know, the loss cannot be fixed in, in the way that, you'll, you know, uh, he's not uh, he's going to be a part of you guys and you're part of your guys life. But the absence will be there. You know, when I when I am on Twitter and I'm going to look for his report or look to write something to him, that absence will be there. He was ubiquitous to everybody. Um, but it will be greater for you guys. And in those moments, you just got to remember what a good guy he was, what a good dude he was, how much he fought through his health issues and how much great time you had with him. Because being a full woman writer is one of those rare things or an editor, he could stay at home. He could be a good dad. He could, he could be there all the time. And those moments you can't replace. So again, my heart and my condolences go out to his family um, extended as well. Um, I will miss him very much. Jeremy. Um, so I said, I said this in, in, in what I wrote on, um, and the trivia that went up, but like, I can count on, 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 <laughs> I'd say one hand, but it's less than that. The number of the number of people who have, have in in a very real way changed my life, and you know when it, when I came on as thrown one as uh, Chad in the movie zone and, and the sheesh were the guys who, who who brought me in, and you know sheesh was the person who who, who uh, brought me in as news posting and then later editor, and he's definitely one of those people, but Larry is too. Um, in like, it's really even hard to quantify, like looking back before I started, before I started writing, or even not, not even writing, like not even doing just the reviews, but before I started doing news posting and editing stuff, you know, I, that was I literally never even imagined that I that this is where I could be in my life right now, which is a place where I love what I do so much more than what I what I was doing before this. Um, and and that's because in a really big way of, of Larry and the the support that he gave and the ability, you know, when I when I was first doing movie stuff to you know, do wrestler of the week, um, in, in the, the wrestling zone and then coming in and doing one of the shows. I don't, I think I did SmackDown for the R's and, and, and slowly expanding out into wrestling because of that. He honestly, when I started with, when I started on this, I wasn't really into wrestling at that point. My fandom had waned, um, he changed that, um, and he is he is somebody who I you know very literally interacted with on a daily basis, quite possibly more than anybody uh, on a daily basis for years. And you know it's something that I'm still coming to terms with. I'm sure we all are. Um, and it's something that I over you know. I'm not going to forget and I'm going to remember fondly 
literally forever. And I don't know how else I can say it. Cook. Well, I mean, there's not much I have left to say that I haven't already said before, I don't think. Although, once I start talking, uh, <laughs> I, find I seem to have a way to kind of ramble on to several other points. Steve, and also Steve. keep in mind that my internet has taken a dump at least once during this particular segment of the podcast. So <laughs> that's probably another reason I'll probably keep it short and sweet. But, uh, yeah, I mean, me and Larry Zonka, I've met, we, we go way back, way back to... 2003, I believe it was, that we first uh, met up on the internet and started our wrestling writing careers uh, together, and he moved upward, and he took me along with him, and uh, we've been pretty much joined at the hip almost ever since, and Larry's done so many great things for, you know, he's done great things for the internet wrestling community, he's done lots of great writing, lots of great, great podcasting, lots of <coughs> lots of this and lots of that, and, you know, and it goes without saying that he was a wonderful friend to us all. One of the one of my closest friends, whether whether you want to say online or offline or whatever. Even if I never met the guy, I still consider him one of my closest friends. He was somebody I could always talk to about basically anything. I could say whatever I wanted to him, and he never. We never had any kind of an argument. You know, we we were we never had a crossword that I can remember. I mean, maybe there are some occasions where I was drunk, and we went, I don't know. <laughs> but as far as I can remember, guys, we never had a, a serious argument. He never got really mad at me about anything. I mean, I wasn't perfect as a writer. I wasn't perfect as a podcasting partner. But uh, he always always had a lot of patience for my flaws. I'll say that. And it's been, a, as everybody said, it's been a terrible week in the, in the wrestling world. And uh, with the other news that's broken over the past week and with this, it's just been, it's been a tough time. And... All we can do is press forward because I know that Larry Zonka would want us to do so. He would want me to keep writing everything that I'm writing, and he would want everybody else to keep pressing on and uh, keep 411 going and keep uh, keep watching wrestling, keep enjoying wrestling, I think is what Larry would like us to do the most. So, I mean, I just feel so awful for his family and for his friends and for, and for all his fans too because – I know that uh, you know you guys out there who read us and listen to us. Uh, you're you're gonna miss out on a vast source of information and knowledge now. So, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, God bless you, Larry. Um, I feel like I've talked enough during this podcast, but I'm actually kind of stalling for time because a couple of people have messaged me saying that they might join on and I don't want to end the show if they're going to uh, join the show. So uh, I will, I don't know. We can kind of keep talking for another five minutes. I apologize for trying to wrap everybody up. And now it's like, all right, you guys got another five minutes I'll to, to hang I'll out. I'll ramble on. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve just talked about how horrible he was uh, podcasting with Larry <laughs> and I sent Steve a message about this uh, earlier. Uh, I don't even know how to... Steve, how do you describe it? It, it, it? I don't even know what we were going to talk about, but it was a disaster in a glorious way. We're just... It's 2000 and what? Four? Nothing. Something, something like that. I've got this microphone that won't move. It's just like one of the little ones you keep next to your computer. If you have to talk. And yeah. the console computer. And then Steve has the big console computer. And then we call each other. And we're on speakerphone. And we're trying to see how everything works. Because <laughs> we want to about... <laughs> wanna talk about wrestling and football. And it Good was it, it was a disaster. I don't even I don't even think it made the site right. No, it didn't. And, uh, it was just... and speaking of which, I mean, uh, I will say that uh, our good friend Justin Dustin James remembers you, uh, JT, because he mentioned how he used to ride somebody for being a Detroit Lions football fan. <laughs> Doesn't everybody ride me for being? And a... I was and I was kind of hoping to avoid talking about football on this podcast because that brings up the fact that uh, you know the. Everybody has flaws, let's be honest. And Larry Zonka's one flaw as a human being. He had one. 
I, I love him like a brother and all that. But <laughs> yeah. the one flaw the man had as a human being was he was a fan of the goddamn Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, man. Are you kidding me? How can you root for those boys? And in the span of the time we knew each other, uh, let's see, there was a, what was it, two, 2005, yes, the Carson Palmer game. So, that was wonderful. So that wonderful Carson experience. Palmer game, yeah. yeah. Um, there was, you know, years and years and years of the Steelers winning over and over again. <laughs> and that kept going on for a while. And then we had, uh, what, 20, was it 2015 or 16, the uh, the old Vontaze Burfitt game. Oh, that was a wonderful experience, oh, too. 2016, yes. Yeah, that was a that was a wonderful experience, too. So, uh, you know, yeah. I was hoping nobody would bring that up. So but now I'm hot. Now I'm mad because oh, now I, you're, now you're... Got all these, I was thinking about all these terrible memories I have as since Cincinnati's Bengals fan. Wow. And at least Larry Zonka, at least Larry Zonka got to experience a lot of joy and bliss throughout his life. I know. As a fan Super of the Pittsburgh Bowl Steelers. Wins, he a got, lot of Super Bowl wins. wins. And wins. I can only hope that I can live 200 more years so I can get the Bengals the same number of wins in the Super Bowl that Larry Zonka's team had. And I, I think it'll probably be more than that, to be honest with you. It'll probably be 300 or 400 more years. I need, I'm need, i going to be ahead in a jar like on Future Rama or something. So you got me going, man. Got me going. Oh, man. Ugh. Larry Zonka took such pleasure in his Steelers winning a Super Bowl in Ford Field. Oh, I'm sure he did. My stadium. <laughs> uh, he yeah. did. He had uh, he had Steelers memorabilia in his house. He had Penguins memorabilia in his house. Uh, he Penguins. yeah. He he was certainly a, a Pittsburgh fan through and through. Uh, I mean, I don't know anything about Super Bowl heartache or anything. I mean, at least <laughs> no, my teams have been he, to the Super Bowl. Neither do I. At least I my teams have given. been to the Super Bowl. Uh, no, the Carolina Panthers didn't have a bad experience in the Super Bowl. No, never. never. Uh, <laughs> we try to forget about that. Yeah, not at all. Um, but but yeah, he like he was a that that was one thing I guess we we didn't touch on. Like he did have other interests besides wrestling. People yeah, might not right. know that. Uh, but like he he was a big uh, football fan. He always you know mentioned the the Steelers on Twitter. Monday Night Football after Raw, he would tune into. To Monday Night Football, Sunday Night Football, watch all the games. Um, big listener of the Dan Patrick Show, he would yes. reference yes, Dan Patrick would. Show many, many times, whether it was on Twitter or on podcast or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we've made Larry out to be like this wrestling consumer, and he, he certainly was. But the man and uh, nine hundred two one zero. Anytime nine hundred two one zero was on, he, he would certainly watch that as well uh I, i'm pretty sure that's all he watched wrestling football and 90210 i don't know anything else that he actually watched it was a big um, i got one fan. more i got one more big... for you i, will. Oh, I got Bo- we'll boston say... legal boston legal he was a boston okay. legal <laughs> yep yep yes. yep yes he was um he i was, was alan a... shore and he was denny crane that's right i i will i will say this larry was very generous about uh shows he watched and whatever shows you watched or anything but then he was Love him to death, an asshole. If your team played his team, so <laughs> Detroit Lions would play the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then the Steelers would lose, or excuse me, win by three points. And then I'd just get a text from Larry, and it would say, "Oh, that was heartbreaking. So sorry." Like, oh, he knew- fuck you, man. <laughs> like, he knew better. He stop knows, that with me after a couple of years. About, yeah, Steve knows. <laughs> He knew Bear Stop would do that with me after a couple of years. He figured that out real quick. Yeah, I did not suffer that kind of thing. We've got look at uh, all these white. Men. We've got Tony Acero on the line. Finally, some diversity on the show. That's right. <laughs> hey, <laughs> howdy, Tony. How's it going, man? You know, trying to survive. Yeah. Uh, we were just sharing, you know, thoughts and memories of Larry. We actually got into stuff that wasn't wrestling with him. Um, but, yeah, you know, go ahead. Any any thoughts and memories, buddy? I mean, you know, this is really like, honestly, it's it's put into perspective how long we've all been doing this, um, or some variation of it. You don't really uh, think back on the length of time that it's been. I actually went to my emails and scrolled all the way back to see the first uh, message that I got from Larry, 
and the first message I got from him was, your raw review sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, uh, it was joking. Was that last week? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but that was... Um, that's that's all he ever did was like just bust my chops, just say like you know do better or send me the Batman photo, the Bane photo. That I mean, it's infamous now. It's you know <laughs> holding up a picture of Batman sucking it. I don't even know where that came from, but regardless of what tweet <laughs> or message I'd send him, that was always the response that I'd get. Um, but I, I think what I remember the most fondly is that any idea I had, and I had a lot of ideas, he would legit just be like, "Yeah, sure, write it." And what that meant to me is uh, he uh, he trusted what I was doing, which is a big deal because, um, you know, Ash was not always very um, trusting. <laughs> uh, so I, I did a I did like a an Undertaker column where I reviewed every single WrestleMania, which was boring for the first like 10 matches. And he let me run with it. Um, I don't know. He really I don't know if you guys know this. I snuck into the wrestling section Um I, like, maneuvered myself in very, very um, stealthily. I started in um, the movie section wanting to be in the wrestling section, and Larry took one Monday off, and I I jumped at it and then just took over. So it was because he wanted to spend more time with his girls, with his family, girl at the time, that I got the opportunity to do what I'm doing now. And now the world has been blessed with the AJ Lee photo every single Monday. <laughs> Ever since, <laughs> let me let me welcome since. on uh, from from Voices of Wrestling, Rich Krejci. Rich, we appreciate you joining us, man. We're just you know sharing thoughts and memories of Larry. So anything you got to say, the floor is yours. And unmute your mic. That is a uh, tradition on this podcast that everyone is having trouble with the the mic the mic being muted when when we start things off here. Ironic that the voice of wrestling <laughs> representative has no voice. Voice of the voiceless. I'm going to be over there, Tony. I'm here now. There we go. I'm going to bury you in the NBA email thread, Rich. He's not paying any. Rich. We got Rich's voices. We got Tony eating a burrito over here. Yeah, Tony, with... Tony's eating. I mean, it is it is six thirty. We are running on. Uh, Break it down. We're running on two and a half hours right now. This I think that's just a sub sandwich. My bad. That's not a burrito. <laughs> not a burrito. You racist prick. <laughs> the tongue i swear my Freudian slip i suppose what is beaner eating a burrito <laughs> Rich is rejoined, I think, and his his new microphone is muted. Rich, can you speak? Yes, I okay. think I got it. Skype Yay! kept crashing. Can everybody hear me now? There yeah. I said I was going to bury you in the NBA thread for this. <laughs> that's fair. That's, that's, I probably <laughs> deserve it. So, uh, We appreciate you joining us. And again, we're just, we're just sharing memories and thoughts, and so the floor is yours, man. Yeah, so I, you know, the thing I'll always remember uh, about Larry is, you know, first off, and and, and we published something at voicewrestling dot com as well, which was I thought really cool. Uh, it's just like all the the bunch of the staff members were just like, let's just talk about it, you know, let's just have a, a, a thread where we just talk about Larry, and it was really cool to see all the different stories come in, and uh, and it was interesting how many different people were touched by Larry in some way, shape, or form, whether it's wrestling watching, whether you know it's wrestling writing, podcasting, whatever way. So it was really cool to see just how you know these people from all across the world, and I'm sure you guys have been getting that as well is that you're getting people from every walk of life that in some way, shape, or form were touched by him, which is just like, it's just amazing. It's just, uh, you know, and, and one thing we, we really remarked about more than anything is like, everybody liked him and like nobody likes anybody on the internet like you know especially the wrestling world everybody hates each other like you know there's a very small window of people you have your little bubble that those people will like it but like everybody like larry like nobody has a bad word about him and that's so rare for somebody that was around uh, as long as he was and it speaks to how awesome he, he was in a lot of ways too but um one thing i'll always remember uh, about him is just how long he had been doing this for like like memories that i have back of god i think tna like 2003 tna stuff i think is when i first started reading larry and it's like man when you realize like how long that's been going on and like you can't search for a show without larry's review coming up like on the first page of google where you're like god damn larry did that show too like when did he do that oh 2010 okay like and and you use it like everybody has used it anybody who does any review anybody who does any historical podcast anything like that 
you look up a show, and I promise you, 90% of the time, Larry has done a review of that show, and it's just unbelievable how uh, how long he had done this for, and how you know how great he was at doing it too, and like the work ethic was incredible. Like you'd be 4:30 a.m., be the 19th World Tag League night, and like you wake <laughs> up, and there's fucking Larry's review, and you're like, Larry, go to bed. Like, what, what are you doing? And then he's back six hours later to review main event or something. You're like, Larry, don't review main event. Like, yeah. You don't have to, but he just did. He reviewed everything. He had to do it. He would cover thumb wrestling even. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guarantee if there was, he covered the, we mentioned it earlier, he covered the WWE 2K, like, dream matchup tournament. Like, yeah, what are you right? doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, why are you doing that? No one plays this game, and Larry <laughs> is here, like, reviewing simulation matches from this game, and he's like, oh yeah, Ric Flair didn't work the leg enough in this Seth Rollins match to set up the finish. Like, Larry, it's a broke-ass game, like, you don't need to review this stuff. You know what though? Ashy's paid for it. That's the thing. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. It's like I will, I remember seeing that 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 was scheduled, like the the live coverage for that <laughs> one schedule, and I was like, "Are you goddamn kidding me?" <laughs> and yet, it was really entertaining to read, not to watch, but to read. <laughs> I remember I I did I read it and I was like oh he gave that like three star like I my brain was like <laughs> do I need to seek this out and like watch this stream right. and watch this match based on what Larry gave the star rating to big match <laughs> uh, it, it's like Rich said like I, I use it all the time for for news and stuff just type in the the show the date whatever and then search it through and see what happened and be like okay that happened on this show. It, like everything is archived. Um, Jerome mentioned earlier, we, we might try to put together an ebook or something. Uh, we'll, we'll speak about mm, that yeah. to, to do archives on, uh, to do an ebook of, of all Larry's reviews and whatnot. But yeah, Rich, as you said, like the the work ethic was second to none. We, we talked about like he was he would watch these like New Japan Road Two shows, and it's like you don't need to watch the like live. It wasn't just watch them like live. Right. Like he's right. It's a single a. cam show yeah. with a bunch of six man tags, and he's watching it at four a.m. And you're yeah. like, oh, dude, why are you doing this? Uh, and, and and like Rich, Rich, to first off, thank you for the 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 thing Voices of Wrestling did on Larry. That was um the community coming together for all this. The situation absolutely sucks. But it, it's been great to see the the community come together and and Voice of Wrestling putting out the the long tribute was uh was was great to see and I know he had like such admiration and and respect for everything Voice of Wrestling did because w when I would stay over there and when I would try to sleep and he wouldn't sleep uh he was always listening to y'all's podcast and, oh and god just, like, i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> i could literally like i could hear lanza like yelling i'm in the other room and i'm hearing lanza yelling about something and i get up i'm like larry you've got to like turn that down too <laughs> and but, like he he was always listening to the podcast and like we would yeah. talk about it and you know you guys opinion stuff so i know he had like just the utmost respect and admiration for everything you guys did yeah, and I, I always remember too, and, and I mentioned that that piece that we did uh, on the site is that like one of the things I always remember is like pretty early on when we were you know just tweeting stuff out or tweeting our show links out or tweeting anything about our website is he would retweet it and like he never had to do that. I mean, he ran a, comp a quote unquote competing website even though we were nowhere near what four one mania we still are not anywhere near you know what, what, what you guys are or whatnot. And I was oh, always like, why did he yeah. have to do that? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, go ahead, Rich. Oh, sorry, my mic cut out there for a sec. No, what I was saying is, like, he didn't have to do that. Like, he – and I was always like, why are you – you know, I, I was kind of amazed that he did that as early as he did and, and, and the fact that he did it at, at all because, you know, most other people won't do that. I run a site. They run a site. We're in these different worlds. We're, quote, unquote, competing or whatever. So so he wouldn't do that, and it was always awesome that, that he did that, and he would slide in the DMs and give some advice or, or, or talk about stuff. And I was like, dude, you've been reviewing stuff for, like, 15 years. Like, we're just some schlucks that are – you know, we could be come and go in, in, in a month. Like, why, were, why are you spending any amount of time to kind of talk – to us or help us out or whatever and yeah again like like with many larry things you're like you didn't have to do that larry. <laughs> like you don't have to go like go do something else you don't have to like retweet my stuff or listen to my podcast but he did and that's what was always amazing about him is like he seemed like he had 30 hours in a day or so he had more hours in a day than the rest of us i don't know how he did it but um he, he just somehow found a way to do so much more than anybody can seemingly do in a single day uh, for, for sure. We, we've talked about like his sleeping and the fact that he just, he didn't sleep. At did he? All. Yeah, I was gonna no, say, no, 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 no. I've, like, right. no, when, when I would stay over there, like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to bed. 
And again, your podcast woke me up. Thanks, uh, jerks. Um, <laughs> but I guess it, it's him. He was the one listening to it. But, it's his fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, like, it, I would be like, I'm, I'm going to sleep. Like, you can watch the, the, the tag matches before the G1 and stuff, like the, those matches. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to watch it. And then I'm going to watch this, like, dojo show. And then I'm going to watch this MLW show. And then I'm going to watch WXW. And like, dude, like, Go, go to bed like i i literally the sometimes the only time he would sleep when i'd stay over there for a weekend is like we would watch a movie on the couch and he just fall asleep during the movie it's like oh it's not wrestling i don't have to review it all right this is what i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> sleep right now like that was the only time like sometimes he, he would sleep and he he just he didn't do it by the way you can tell rich is like the most professional of all of us his mic is so clear all you other people just got the <laughs> hack mics and everything rich comes in loud and clear which sounds like a voice of wrestling. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I had to. I had to uh, redeem myself over my embarrassing uh, muting and, and Skype crashing at the beginning. So you were. That, you were yeah. not the first one to have that issue. That was literally like the theme of this show. Was everybody? Yeah. I would try to bring on. It's like, all right, unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. The thing that always amazed me is, you know, like we talk about all the uh, all the all the New Japan stuff that he would review at like three or four in the morning. Um, and what would amaze me is like, I understand this is, you know, posting stuff and, and people can come and read it later, but there would be comments on that stuff right away. Like yeah. people would go to read his stuff at the, at the ass crack of dawn, <laughs> um, because it was him. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we said, you know, after Monday, like I, I think we all just kind of like went to the site, went looked for Larry's review, and we were like, you know, what what Larry think of Raw? Was it good? Was it bad? You know, what was his opinion on it? And I think that's when that's when it sunk in, at least for me, of like it's not there and it's not going to be there, and it, it's 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 still tough to deal with, um, but. It, it sucks. It, it really sucks that th- this happened to, to such a good person because because Larry, the, you know, work ethic, family, like he he brought people together. Like he brought all of us together. He, he helped. He like I have friends for life because of Larry. Like it's the one like Steve Cook, um, Dustin James, Todd Bergman, like plenty of people like just complete friends for life, like bringing the wrestling community together, you know, talking, talking with Rich, talking with Tony, talking with Jeremy, like just all of this is happening because of Larry and because he was so kind, like Rich was talking about, like he would, he would retweet stuff. He would, he would promote stuff that maybe he didn't have to promote. He would reach out to people and and give them advice. I've said it like, I know wrestlers reached out to him. And we're like, hey, what'd you think? What'd you think of this? What can we do better here? And he would give them advice. Like Larry was such a measuring stick um, w- with everything. And I've said that too many times. I, I, uh, I've been talking for way too long. It, does anybody <laughs> else have, have anything to say? I don't mean to to cut everybody off. I, I truly appreciate everybody coming on and joining us for for this today we've been going for almost three hours just remembering uh larry i think everybody for for coming on does anybody have any final words before i completely wrap things up here i think the the immediate i mean with me doing the raw report and him posting his review immediately after um it was always funny i would write like a paragraph to two paragraphs on how upset I was about what happened. And then I'd go to his review and it would say, it did what it needed to do. And that was, (laughs) and (laughs) And and I'm like, all right, Larry, and you're the one that people want to read. Jesus. (laughs) Um, but, (laughs) But on the other hand, he would, he would also, um, he would review the matches in a way that, like, okay, well, that makes sense from a business standpoint, not from a I'm a person and I don't like what's happening on TV standpoint. Um, and that's what any type of real, you know, analytical person would do. Um, there's far too many wrestling personalities that do nothing but hate and, and I mean, 
in our circle of, of wrestling critics, I guess you could say, it's um, it's just commonplace to hate everyone. Like that's just you know you're just garbage and wrestling sucks and I don't know why I still watch after 20 years and blah blah blah. But um, a lot of re- a lot of wrestling writers, I think, have become somewhat jaded, have lost a little bit of uh, their passion, and Larry never lost it, and that's just crazy. Like, there's days where I'm reviewing Raw, and I'm like, God, I'd rather be doing anything than this right now. And that's, like, the flagship show. But Larry just, he he found something in, in every episode, regardless of how he rated it. It was just part of him. And um, I think moving forward, Jeremy and I kind of touched on it um, amongst each other, where, you know, we're not trying to fill anybody's shoes. And from the business side of things on the website, we're going to lose a lot of followers. And I think that our main focus is to hopefully let them know that everything we do moving forward is not, is for Larry, not, you know, to replace him, not to be better than him, not to um, copy him or mimic him, but legit, like the same dude that would message us multiple times saying we're late for our deadlines is still very much present. And um, I don't, I don't foresee. In fact, I I'm, you're going to see my name a lot more. It's going to piss a lot of people off. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm ready for it. And I, I'm excited about it because I think that I'm I'm doing it for a good reason. This isn't me trying to take a spot. I'm not trying to take any spot. I don't want the spot. Um, no one can take Larry's spot. It's going to take like 10 of us to even cover what he covered in one day. Um, but I think that... Uh, I think that at least from my perspective and from what I'm going to be doing moving forward, um, I'm going to be uh, trying my hardest to leave a lasting impression like he did. 401 is the shit, man. And it can't stop being that just, you know, because Larry un- unfortunately passed away. Uh, Rich, do you have any final words? Uh, for me, I mean, I, I would just say like, yeah, the, the, the kindness, um, w- was always something that stood out to me, the, the work ethic and yeah, he'll be, he'll be impossible to replace like one-on-one. Nobody can replace you know the work that he did. And I was talking about it with somebody else, uh, when we were recording a podcast and, and, and kind of touching on, on Larry a bit as well. And we said like, I mean, he, he it'll be an all time, like nobody will ever meet the work ethic of Larry. It's just impossible to do. And that's fine. Like, that's fine. Like, I, I don't know that anybody could could do that. I don't know if anybody should try to you know, do the work ethic that Larry did. But like, yeah, it, it'll always be like the measuring stick, I think, for, for people and anybody in this circle, anybody that read 411, anybody that kind of reviews, covers podcasts about wrestling or whatever. I think he will always be somebody that, that people will look up to and, 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 and be the measuring stick uh, that, that we all try uh, to achieve, but yeah, probably I'll fail uh, in, in doing it just because he was, I think he was the one of one. I mean, I think he's the all time best wrestling reviewer, all time most prolific wrestling reviewer. I think, I think really of all time. Yeah, completely agreed. Um, uh, I want to thank everybody for, for joining, for joining us here today, for, for joining myself and Steve cook on this podcast for four one one mania for, for hosting the podcast Everybody that, that listened, um, everybody that has supported Larry and the website through the years, everyone that has donated uh, to the GoFundMe, everyone that has sent you know 411 messages, sent myself messages, sent any of us messages uh, about Larry, has sent the family messages, just everybody out there who who has you know been part of this over the uh, years and especially the last couple of days, like thank you so much for for all the support with everything and um yeah larry will will be missed there is there's absolutely no replacing everything he did as as a boss as a writer as a friend as a husband as a father like larry i think rich said it best like larry was one of one when it came to when it came to a lot of things and um again just thank you everybody for for listening in thank you everybody for for joining uh the podcast and um you know, rest in peace, Larry. Yeah.